What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the conversational podcast where we say forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer today, joined by three of the best guys in the interwebs, my good friends, the co-hosts of Revolver Live. Briar Rabbit, how you feeling this week, sir? Did you change the intro? No, I'm just tired of people saying, are we still a gaming podcast? <laughs> no. People still play this game? <laughs> So I took it upon myself. I picked my balls uh-huh. up off the ground and, uh-huh. I, and I, you know, worked a few words around in my head and, and switched a few things up because, you know, it is mainly uh, a conversational podcast centered around video games. I feel that that's the, the, the super glue that binds us together as well as our audience is that we love playing video games. And that's predominantly the thing that we do. But in I feel like revol- you just called me a nerd. I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get wrecked, nerd. Get wrecked, nerd. Get, get wrecked. <laughs> How you doing this week, man? I haven't seen you in a couple of days. You've been I've been so week? busy, man. I, I, uh, you know, it's tax season. Unlike, uh, unlike you, <laughs> I wait till the last possible minute to do my taxes. First minute. Oh shit! <laughs> it's like twelve oh one the day you can turn in your taxes. Yes, it ready is. to go. Um, also, uh, that other podcast I do, DCP, is taking off a, a, up a lot of my time. And I rediscovered a love for making YouTube videos, so I've been trying to fit some more YouTube videos in there, which has been actually a lot of fun. Like I, Ooh, like I feel wow. like this refreshed kind of energy to do YouTube videos, which has been nice lately. It's been what, what, it's been fun. What do to you do. think is uh, has been the paradigm shift there? What do you think was the catalyst that lit that fire under your ass and made you look at YouTube and say, you know what, you're not such a fucking bitch? No, what no, is YouTube is still a fucking bitch. But oh. I I found that I wanted to make videos anyway. If there was another place I could <laughs> post them, I would. <laughs> Got you. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. Like, to be honest with you, I think I was just mad at Bungie for a while and it just kind of turned me off. I didn't want to talk about Destiny because I was so angry about it. And I don't like to just be in an angry place all the time. You know what I mean? So uh, Let me give you a little bit of credit there, too, because, you know, as someone who is really deep into the, the Destiny scene, a lot of people on, you know, YouTube and social media who are big into Destiny are less likely especially if they have a big audience to come out and, and voice their disdain for some of the decisions they made. To me, that makes you even more of a real fucking person that you're willing to say, hey, look, I'm kind of you know aggravated with Bungie, the, the directions they've gone with this game, and I'm just not feeling it. So to me, that makes you – your balls are even bigger, Briar, you know, in my opinion. <laughs> well, even bigger. I mean, and people theoretically. Don't even know you're, metaphorically, people don't know you're, you're in any way. Right now. <laughs> he doesn't even have a chair, guys. He At just least two on, handfuls. Bends on his balls. <laughs> How you doing, Brian? You ever see Johnny dangerously with elephantitis? Yeah. <laughs> they don't even I, have, I have seen Pompoco, and only the anime nerds will get that reference, but that's one for you guys. That's a, a gift. A gift. <laughs> a gift for the anime nerds. I've been having a good week, though. I, bit busy, but good. Today, uh, this weekend, I got back into photography. Spring photography season is back in full swing, so I got a little bit of sun. It was nice to be outside. It was like 80 degrees yesterday, which was real nice. It was a little colder today, but it's just nice to be outside after a long winter inside. Yeah, man, it's, it's good to hear, Brian. It's exciting news to hear that you're back in the YouTube scene. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm considering it. I got everything I could ever need. I'm considering it. But, but speaking of gifts... A gift that we got this week that we didn't get last, or the week before. I can't remember, Gary. Were you here last week? No. Um, you... I think in spirit. Yeah. So <laughs> you're here. And, and see, I'm last here. week I, I actually wanted to have an English muffin a, in your place, but Briar went. You know, he he changed it and ma- made a different decision. You're back with us this week, and we're all very happy to see you. How you doing, man? Are you feeling better? I am, yes, feeling refreshed. Joined a gymnasium who are taking an extraordinary amount of my monthly salary out each month to have the pleasure to to turn up and sweat there. Um, so that's that's a bonus. That's been a good week. And for the people um, who don't know, uh, Wilson and I got together uh, earlier today with Gary when Gary was in the gym. And uh, he was in the gym. He kept telling us about it. And then he finally told us the truth that he was actually in the cafeteria. And <laughs> He said he sent us a picture of him and his, you know, beautiful pink. He did. Pink and then he said, teeth. I'm gonna go take a shower, so I'll catch you guys later. And I said, No, no, no. This is I wanna hear the water running. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is not the time to hang up. He bolted. This is the yeah, time actually, to turn on the, sh- the video function of that phone. <laughs> Beasley shut it down real quick. He just goes, All right, Gary, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> right after I said. But aside from that, it's been a good week. Thank you. <laughs> We're really happy to have you back. You know, the world is not 
functioning properly or spinning on his axis adequately without a little Gary Diaz in the revolver week. So thank you so much. We really missed you, sir. And last but certainly not least, Wilson. How are you doing this week, my friend? I Sorry, am can we stop that right there? His oh. name is not Wilson. Let, let me let me do it. If I, can, if, I can, if, I can, if I can change, you know, the gaming podcast to conversational podcast, Wilson will now be known as Sweet Dick Willie. Sweet Dick Willie, how you doing this week, my friend? Everything going okay with you? Uh, and, and for people wondering, no, I have not tasted it. This is all coming from Gary. <laughs> I, I don't just think anybody was wondering. <laughs> Just once a week, it will warm the cockles of my heart if we refer to him as Sweet Dick Willie on the intro. It would just, it, it means a lot to me. Once a week, you realize the show is only once a week. Right? <laughs> I you mean every to... show. <laughs> See what you did there. I am fucking exhausted, dude. I have spent roughly 34 hours in this week's Nightfall, the Tree of Probabilities, um, they say the cabal are stuck in there on an endless loop. I beg to differ. Um, I was stuck in there on an endless <laughs> loop. And it's actually really interesting. I did get the gun, finally. I, after 34 hours, I got the freaking gun to drop. Um, the, and it's funny because the flavor text on the gun says that a cabal scion reported guardians not engaging enemies hundreds of meters in the sky and running past. And then it showed it from the centurion's perspective saying the centurion reported guardians running past the battlefield not engaging enemies and it kept telling it from different perspectives in an endless loop which is actually funny because that's exactly what we were doing was running through the infinite forest and skipping everything and it was just kind of funny that they worked that into the lore of the gun so to speak and uh <clears throat> it was crazy man like it I have, I have mixed feelings about it. We'll, we'll, we'll probably get into it here in a little bit, but I definitely have an interesting story about how I feel about the Nightfall specific loot grind, so to speak. So, Well, I'll be interested to hear it. Uh, as far as me, uh, things in my new business, You Inspire Designs LLC, has been really uh, picking up and very, very busy yes. all week. Uh, Kate actually had to quit her the job that she was doing before for Google because she got paid less. And... Um, for the last couple of weeks, we've been incrementally getting more and more business until it kind of, you know, hit hit uh, capacity early in the week. I think Tuesday is when we Tuesday is when we had our first big shirt order. And we've been kind of working our way through vinyl and weeding all week until we kind of had an explosion of work over the weekend. And you guys know I haven't played any games all week. Uh, and so we finally got done. Uh, I got done this morning. And uh, was able to take a, a brief break and then took a nap. And during a nap, a customer came and now we're back to work. So it's been really busy. I, we've been really, really enjoying it. But hopefully they stop throwing money at us and I can play some more video games this week. You should have uh, had a record quitting her job and then uploaded it to YouTube. That would have been easily thousands of hits. Right. Yeah, well. <laughs> also, it's, it's don't not... you have like 18 kids over there? Like, Briar, you didn't see the, the picture? Yeah, oh, it worked. Like, <laughs> all the kids, all the kids were at the table. Yeah, Saturday he's night. got them working. They were all nice. at the table reading Good. vinyl, and uh, you know, Noah's that's what okay. parenting's all about, right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's I, why I, they I, have them in the sweatshops out in Southeast Asia. The little fingers they can do the fine detail work that adults well, can't. Gary, so. let me explain to you. It's all semantics. <laughs> if you have a big house with air conditioning, it can't be a sweatshop. Uh, but. That's been my story, and I'm sticking to it. My daughter's eight years old. She's not really good at weeding vinyl, so we put some vinyl through the our machine to test and let her practice. So I'm thinking in the next two months, we'll have a full-time employee. It's going to be great. You, child can't, labor get, laws. you can't get yeah. arrested for child labor if you don't pay them. It, then it's just chores. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> I told the guys earlier when we were talking, uh, when Gary was working out, uh, I said, uh, my, my my boys are 15 and 16. I let them stay up till 4 a.m. last night. Well, that's the latest I've ever allowed them to stay up. They probably do it every night. But uh, I let them do it because they did such a good job on their chores yesterday. They got mm. up early. They went outside. They cut the grass. They cleaned both cars, right? They came back in. They did all the chores inside the house. They didn't spend all day on uh, on Fortnite. And then last night, I walked in their bedroom angrily, as a father usually does, and looked at them and said, be in bed in 15 minutes. And my son looked at me. He was like, yes, sir. And then I walked <laughs> to the bathroom. I realized they did a good job. So I let them stay up till four. And that's my story. For the people who are new to the show, Revolver Live is a conversational podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast, revolvergamescast 
at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar's YouTube channel and my YouTube channel, Beastly Gamer. If you guys are unable to see the live video feed or the video formats on YouTube, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. Leave those reviews. Welcome to Revolver Live episode 37. We're getting up there, guys. A year younger than me. Yeah. So this is a, a pretty interesting episode, I think, that we've culminated for you guys behind the scenes. This is the conspiracy episode. Cue the X-Files music. There's a lot of conspiracies in the world, so we're going to kind of focus on that this episode. Every topic won't be on conspiracies because they can kind of drift out into the ether and last for hours and people can talk and there'll be a lot a lot of conjecture back and forth. So we picked some good fun ones that we think that we could kind of, you know, kind of breeze our way through and, and get you guys' feedback in the comments section. We're going to start off and and I'll just let Gary, Mr. Diaz, take it away. I, I don't know if you guys would like to give a shout out to our sponsor before we get started. But our sponsor is On Air PC. And I, I don't have the readout. So I can make something up. But other than that, I think we have a read. I think we pretty much just do it on the fly every time. So right. like on air. Yeah, go ahead, Briar. You're good at this. All right, I was going to let you go. Oh, I was, was going to let you guys go. All right. All right. I'll do it. <laughs> Fuck it. Go for it. <laughs> Fuck it. Do it live, Briar. Do it live. <laughs> uh, on Air PC is uh, our sponsor for the week. And we'd like to thank On Air PC. On Air PC is a company that you go to to build either a streaming PC, a gaming PC, or a combination of the two. Um, if you are new to streaming, if you would like to build a gaming PC, if you'd like to get a PC that can do both, perhaps you'd like to, you know, play some PC games, but also dip your toes in the streaming water, On Air PC is the perfect company to call. Uh, what you receive when you go to On Air PC is one on one service. You get help in picking out parts, you get help in setting up a PC, as well as getting OBS on there and streaming software on there, uh, pre configured. Uh, you get a phone number. So if you have a problem with this PC, you can call Ryan. His name is Ryan. <laughs> Strong name. That's my Ryan name as well. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, do I need to know anything about PCs when I call him? You don't need to know anything about PCs. You just need to know that you want one. And a budget would probably help. <laughs> so I'm sure that Ryan wouldn't mind my analogy here for, for the more layman amongst us who, who yeah. wanted to know what it's like. I liken it to a $10 hooker that you would get at the side of the street oh, now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Now, she'll get the job done, and she might be cheap, but you really don't know what you're going to get. But with on-air PCs, it's like getting a, a legitimate escort girl, the full girlfriend experience. Like you a say, Vegas it, call girl. It may not be as She's cheap a as, a, as a $10 hooker, but what it will be is value for money, quality, and something you'll want to keep going back to time and time again because they make you feel good about yourself. Oh, mm -hmm. And, and to, to expand on Gary's uh, idea, uh, a $10 prostitute only does one or two things. And, and you know what? Some places you go and order a PC, it's only going to do one or two things. But like a, a more prestigious and honorable woman of the night, on air PC asks you what you want. They find out what you need. It could be something as simple as a massage, or it could be RAM, a, a particular type of hard drive, SSD. And uh, like an honorable woman of the night, On Air PC has great, great prices. So definitely look into that, and uh, they'll get you exactly what you need for whatever it is you're trying to do. That's right. You and can find On Air PC uh, at onairpc.com, uh, and they are certified syphilis free. You guys, exactly. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if we're going to get sued by On Air PC today. <laughs> I, I, I think we say. did a good job. Do you know what I was going to say? On air PCs guaranteed to come without viruses, unlike the ten dollar hooker. <laughs> and that will it. move on to our uh, first it. topic of the day. Now, BC introduced this well and said that this week we're going to have conspiracy theorist topics. We're going to have fun topics, um, and we're also going to have this topic, which I have snuck in. It's neither fun. He no didn't conspiracy. sneak anything in. He yeah. rammed it in. Yes. <laughs> this is ten minutes to read. <laughs> I believe he threatened us. With a very <laughs> intrusive topic that he was going to talk about if we didn't talk about this. So take it away, Gary. Why don't yeah. you? <laughs> While the rest uh, of us go get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> this is an inclusive, and this is a topic that people need to know about. So, topic is about World of Warcraft and Destiny 2. Um, you know, two things that I'm passionate about. One more so than the other. 
I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Um, there's been a lot of people that are frustrated that Destiny 2 is a casual game, is a game that doesn't have the progression that they want, and they're calling for the game to be more like World of Warcraft, something that they can sink thousands of hours into and has depth and layers. And really the discussion that I'd like to have today... Uh, I know that a lot of you haven't played World of Warcraft, have limited experience on it, which is why I've got some vignettes to help us move along if we're struggling on that, is how different is Destiny 2 to World of Warcraft? What would need to be changed in Destiny 2 to get it closer to an MMORPG or more like what people like Datto and Slayerage are calling for or um, I guess King Athalion as well recently had sort of cited um, and to start the, the topic off, it's kind of one conversation topic that we could lead from. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that World of Warcraft now has 14 years of development history at this point here. And what Blizzard have done with it is, for people that aren't familiar with World of Warcraft, you bought the game 14 years ago. You've never had to buy another copy of the game. You've only ever bought expansions for the game and paid monthly subscriptions for the game. They've always added to the initial game that you bought. You've never had to buy World of Warcraft 2, 3, 4 when the expansions have come out. Do you think Bungie is always doomed to fail when their titular releases, Destiny 2, maybe 3, 4 as it goes, are always going to throw away everything that they've worked hard over two to three years to build up and establish and start from scratch again, possibly with new systems, new worlds, new laws. Is it not a fair comparison? Where are we going with that? Well, it all also kind of depends on the contract you sign with a publisher. Yeah, you know the contract what I mean? with Activision requires a certain pacing and you know a certain way of doing things. Where Destiny 1 was supposed to come out in 2013, Comet was supposed to come out in 2014, Destiny 2 was supposed to come out in, you know, it's supposed to be every other year you get a you get a new game with the in, the in-between years getting a big expansion. So the question then, if that is contracted and the contract can't be renegotiated, is Destiny as a franchise doomed to never hit its potential and arguably fail to deliver on the the promise of what destiny was conceptually before the first launch of the game i, I mean i don't know because i don't have i don't i don't have any kind of relevant background in warcraft in warcraft do you go back to old places that were available 14 years ago so um that's kind of where i'm going to keep going back into these vignettes and nuggets in world of warcraft you have access to and they actually keep refreshing these in terms of making them light level relevant or power level relevant but you have access to every part of the game from any period of the game assuming that that's still accessible and, and you can go into so you can go and play dungeons from that and the leveling process to go from zero up to 110 takes you through all the expansions that you've had so 14 years that's not what i asked though do you actually do it like at you as a player who's played the game for ten thousand hours do you actually go back to those or do you stick with the, new, the latest content? No. So I will frequently, when I go back, partly for nostalgia, partly for what's something that they call um, transmogrification. So in World of Warcraft, uh, and this is something that's been asked for in Destiny several times, to have like yeah. a cosmetic armor set. Something that you look like that isn't necessarily reflective of your gear. Like, you know, let's say you really like the Trials armor. You can make your armor look like the Trials armor, assuming you've picked it up. In World of Warcraft, any armor that you've owned you can make your character look like. So there's still, the old content is consumed at uh, large rates by people that are hunting drops that they've yeah. never got. So they let's say you could stuff. take, you like the look of the Vault of Glass armor, but you really like the stats that you have on your Leviathan armor. You know, I know I'm comparing D1 and D2, but we're going way back. You could make your leviathan armor look like vault of glass armor but still have all of the perks and stuff of the leviathan so it's <clears throat> literally i like the look of this i like the perks of this i want this to look like this but mm -hmm. perform like this you know what i mean so it's it's just more customization and things um it are you going back and doing old con do they make like let's say the very first raid that came out for world of warcraft is there a reason to go back and do that? Are there? Is the power level still low, or is it just so, transmog, pretty what, much? Blizzard, Which is cool. Uh, I'm not diminishing transmog because you know that would get me going back and doing a lot of old content. Yeah, as long as there's something for you to get, you know, for exactly. playing out of the experience. 
what Blizzard do with old, old content, so you're talking like lower light level stuff that's that's kind of irrelevant in terms of progression, is they have events um, called time walking dungeons or time walking events. So this is content that was, um, again, you, you're 40, 50 levels above it. It's like you going back and doing like, you know, the starting zones of the Cosmodrone again. Uh, but during the time walking events, you can go and queue up and it will make it light level relevant to you. It will drop the gear at your light level. It's a unique timed event to be able to play old content at your light level for this like awesome. two weeks or something. So it's like Age of Triumph. It, exactly like Age of Triumph, but they're cycling through 90 legacy dungeons and 37 legacy raids that they can bring up to light at any point and let you go into it and let you get that old gear with the item level scaled up to what you have. But they can only do that because they have access to the old world. So this brings me back to, I kind of want to talk less about Warcraft. I want to keep using it as, as anecdotes, but more about your perception of destiny. And do you think this contract is going to hamper the game indefinitely? Because they can never do that. They can never say, let's bring the Vault of Glass back. Let's bring these well, things back. Sure they I, can. Don't, I don't think it'll hamper it indefinitely. Um, I think... Activision doesn't want them to fail. And if it takes revamping a contract for a title to reach its potential, which could be pretty high. I mean, let's be real. The D1, they did it with D1. They're definitely capable of doing it, doing it again. It may just take some time and they may actually have to revamp that contract to get said time. And I'm pretty sure if Activision, they want the game to succeed as well. They want Bungie to do good because then they do good. So... I think it's just going to take time. I mean, I mean, September is when everybody's saying that that they think that the game is going to reach a potential at which you can come back to. We still don't even have a whole lot of facts on that. You know what I mean? As to what exactly is coming. So, I mean, realistically, it may take longer, but like, I do think the game, I do feel like it's on the steady up and up from here on out, personally. But if you had um, all of the Destiny 1 content as a baseline, and Destiny mm-hmm. 2 had been bolted onto D1, do you think there would be the same level of dissatisfaction with the game if it was additive, not um, you know, in place of D1? If you had asked me at the end of D1, I would have said no new game. Asking me now, I... It would have been have... better as in, like an addition to Destiny yeah. 1. I don't Damn, think it has that... anything to do with the, any of the problems. I don't think the problem with Destiny is a content problem. I think it's a Speak. systems problem. It's a, you know, it's a... It's an investment problem. It's. It, I don't think it really has anything to do with having you know, the the Cosmodrome not in Destiny Two. So you don't think the world feels smaller? It feels like there's less to do. You think that it's just the way that people are acting in it? I don't really think that. No, I I, I think that there's just there's no reward for spending time in Destiny Two. Exactly. There's Destiny One, was a mile. I think Tefty said it. A mile deep, an inch wide. Destiny 2 is a mile wide and an inch deep. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, there's tons of stuff to do, but there's that's nothing That's a hell of deep. an analogy. Wow. That was, that was Tefty that said that. So, I mean, that's the so, best way to put it. My concern then is, uh, and this is kind of, again, the, the, the embryo of this, of this topic is, it's taking a while to get Destiny 2 fixed. It arguably took a while to get Destiny 1 fixed into a state that everyone was happy with and well not everyone but the majority of people were were largely content with what the game was are you concerned that we'll have destiny 2 in a state that we're happy with and then destiny 3 will come out and we'll be repeating destiny 1 and 2 again for the third time or do you not think there's a danger of that i think that i hope that they could just build off D2 for a while, man, until they get caught up or something. Like they, I feel like <clears throat> with having the internal problems that they did with the beginning development of D1 and basically having to scrap a lot of the game and redevelop D1 and then later to scrap a lot of development towards D2 and revamp that, they're just playing catch-up. It's just a constant game of catch-up and deadlines and things and probably a bunch of shit that I don't understand. You know what I mean? But it definitely has an impact on us players. I'd like to hope that they, if that is the case with Activision, if they have to put out X amount of titles in X amount of years, and that's what's making them try to put, just push stuff out quickly. I'm hoping that they can somehow revamp that and be like, let us catch a breath and just build on this and make stuff right. You know, I I got a quick, which I feel like they're doing for you, Gary, uh, you, you compare destiny to, to world of Warcraft. Um, 
What is it about Warcraft that brings you, that keeps you coming back? As you said, the level cap is 110, I believe. Yeah. And after all these years, you consistently go back to that and play it. What are you getting out of that experience that's bringing you back? It's is it the... the revamping of old content? Is that what's, you know, your draw? Is that your carrying on the stick? Part of it is the expansiveness of the world, which they've only achieved by adding and layering the world year upon year. So, yeah, that is part of it, is the fact that it does feel like a world of Warcraft now, whereas Destiny, to me, feels like a collection of small maps. And that is, you know, partly we could say that's not the problem, but arguably it, it is a small game in scope in comparison. We're comparing apples and oranges here, but I've distinctly done it to try to, to get some um, some argument there. In World of Warcraft, I'd say it's the best in class at what it does. Um, you know, there's no better theme park MMO where it's just like a straight on rails MMO. That's it's a straight journey from start to finish. Very little sandbox. It is just do what we've done. Blizzard have created a, a unique experience for you to, to vast, follow and play. It's a vast um, environment with a lot of enemies, different enemy types, tons of loot, things to chase. Like story, when you can, when you can basically make anything. <clears throat> look like something you know like you ha you have your favorite weapon for the longest time and then it becomes irrelevant and you really like the look of it but now you find a new weapon that you liked more but you like the old look of the other weapon like just little stuff like that that i'd be chasing forever man and then you get to the end of that and then you want to make a different character you want to experience a whole new class like how many like 12 different classes in world of warcraft warcraft compared to yeah. destiny's three and yeah, the three classes in Destiny are definitely different and play different, but like when you look at the classes in World of Warcraft, I mean, we're talking like night and day difference between the way your experience could be had playing the game, you know, as a mage versus like a warrior, you know, things like that. So, I mean, there's definitely replayability on top of a lot of stuff. I've only probably, I, I did a little bit of World of Warcraft. I tried out the free version, played up to level 20. And it was cool, but I know that the game doesn't really start to take off as a new player coming in right now until you get to those later levels and stuff like that. And it does get a little tedious because you're just kind of going through doing all this shit on your own. And a lot of them are very fetch questy. But once you really get to a higher level, that's when the game really starts to unfold, much like any other RPG. But I find this this conversation to be a little academic because Bungie's biggest problem, I I believe, is management. Right? It's like they get to have like they get all the best ideas in the world and all the all these grand plans and grand schemes, but they can't they can't get the show on the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they can't yeah. they can't yeah. fucking they can't just make it happen. Right? Is you know we all know famously Destiny One's history of like you know completely getting rebooted a year before or months before it was supposed to get released and then getting delayed for a year and then having the same exact fucking thing happen for Destiny Two, like you know like the the goals of what they wanted Destiny Two to be did not match at all what players wanted it to be. Now they're playing catch up, trying to make it into what players want it to be. Like, I mean, they just, in my opinion, need to figure out, like, who's managing this thing and, like, you know, are they actually in charge of anything and can they make a decision? They, they need to have they need to have crazy. multiple teams working on different aspects they've of the got, game. They've got multiple teams. They've got multiple companies. they got High Moon Studios is making the DLC that's coming out in next month. You know, that's not even really getting developed inside Bungie. I mean, parts of it are, right? But, yeah, sure you know, like, core is. When, they, when they bring that out on stage for their uh in a uh, is it april 24th they're doing their yeah. twitch reveal yes they said yeah. they're bringing high moon studios out to explain what it is because that's probably who <laughs> developed it right <laughs> right <Yeah. But> no. <laughs> the scary thing about this conversation and, and and we were talking about d3 in the future they they seem to always be kind of behind the ball there's yeah. always more to be yeah. to be fixed uh things to be leveled out and even out for the player base how are they going to catch up and not only that get ahead for another project? It just seems, it seems like, you know, they're in such a bad spot. Like if you look at it from a distance from, you know, looking at the situation as it sits now, they're, they're constantly behind. There's constantly things that need to be repaired and, and fixed for the player base. How do you fix that and, and focus on new, a new project? And on top of that new project, fix all these issues for that. It just seems like, 
they're in a really horrible position with this game. Yeah, man. I see it from both sides. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely see... I'm not a game developer, but I can imagine a lot of the struggles that they're going through, and, going through, and I definitely feel for them because I've played with some of the guys, and they... You know, like, I believe I had I had made a joke about vault space with Irk one night, and he was like, hey, man, it's, it's a serious issue, dude. You know what I mean? Like, they're they're cool people, and at the same time, as a consumer, man, you know, like, I feel for the community and Briar I think you fucking nailed it on the head the other day when you said I think a huge part of this community angst and anger is that people just want their fucking friends list back to play with their friends again and whether they realize it or not I think there's a huge part of people's angst right now and like we want stuff to do not just our friends back but we want stuff to do with our friends and like I said, man, I really do think that from here on out it's going to be on the up and up and that's not me being an apologist that's not me being a a hopeless, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's not me just trying to be positive. Like, I really do think that they know that it's time for some big changes and they know what they need to do. So, and I'm really pumped for next month. Like, it's going to be good. I think the live team knows it's time for big changes, but does management know that, right? Like, I mean, the management knows it, but like, do they know it? Do they know it? <laughs> like, do they get it? <laughs> do they, you know what I mean? Like, going forward, it's like, like, I thought that conversation we had, Gary, the other day was so interesting about like their their development goals, right? It's like their long term goals. If they, those goals are in two separate spots from what the community wants and what they want, the community's never going to be fucking happy. Never, never ever. Like, it's the, impossible. The analogy I used was like if if the community wants to be going to Wendy's and Bungie wants to be going to McDonald's, then every fucking turn they make on the road to McDonald's is going to feel like the wrong turn for the community. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, no, we're supposed to be taking a left here. No, no, what the fuck are you doing? We're supposed to be taking a left here. You know what I mean? Like every fucking turn. So if, if those two th pl things are in different places, then, you know, ultimately, ultimately Destiny is going to be somebody else's game, right? It's going to be a different community will come or, or it will remain this kind of casual thing that they made Destiny 2 into. I think that Bungie does want to make it the game that we want. Like, I think that is their long-term goal at this point. I think that's why they're having a summit. I think that's why, you know, they, they've been making all these changes. I think that's why they're doing this roadmap, right? Is so they can kind of, they can get community sentiment before they actually start, you know, coding this stuff. And then, you know, along the way is kind of judge how that's going. You know, putting the Nightfall reward in, there's nothing fucking casual about that DFA grind, right? <laughs> 34 hours is definitely not. Can I, can I gush about this for like two well, minutes? I you know, actually I'm... now, now Wilson that you say it was three, that's not even a full-time job. Uh, <laughs> that, you don't even get benefits working that job. Hey, I earned 900 Vanguard tokens. All right. I got it going on. You know what? I was going to take you out. You and Zavala out anymore, man. You can go, you can go get something to eat with fucking downer dude from dead orbit. What is it? Iraq Jalal? I don't think that dude now. eats. I he think he's he eats soylent. <laughs> he eats soylent green. <laughs> uh, real quick, man. I went through a bit of a metamorphosis with that whole thing. 34 hours is a long time to mull something over and think about it, uh, especially when you're doing the same nightfall over and over again. So at first, this is great. This is awesome. Me and all my friends are grinding. Uh, about six, seven, eight, nine, ten friends later after they all got it. It's kind of, I didn't beg for it once, man. It just, nope, just pop, boom, fired up again. Just blues, blues, blues. And uh, it, 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 it broke me one morning. I think Gary and Briar messaged me. And the first thing I saw after waking up and putting ten hours in, I saw, yo, DFA boys, let's get in there. <laughs> and I had just fucking lost it, dude. So I kind of, I kind of. I kind of vented a bit to Briar and Gary. Thankfully, they didn't put me on blast too much. Um, but then, I, you know, I said, fuck it. Just kept going in two days later. You know, however, you know, another 12, 14 hours later, I finally got it. In the process, I made six new friends. In the process, my entire friends list was grinding this hand cannon. And we got some good laughs out of it because you guys got to kind of roast me a bit when I was kind of going off that morning. Uh, and ultimately, man, like it, it was a positive experience. Did it suck putting 34 hours in? Yes. Do I feel any better for it? No. But the hand can is pretty dope. 
is pretty good. So, you know, that's kind of my take on the whole thing. Like at first I was super negative about it. And in the end, like I said, man, I gained like six new friends. Like uh, I jumped on with Pope and he had a third guy and then Pope had to leave. So me and him kept going and then he had a friend. It was like the cycle just kept kind of going. Yeah. Wait, and it felt wait, like wait, wait, wait. it felt like old D one of like grouping up with strangers and like you meet some like I met some really cool dudes like some really yeah, cool I think I, we need to stop right there because I, I believe Gary has the same question I do. Yeah, wait. You said you just teamed up with Pope. Does that mean wait? What what platform did you get the hand cannon on? PlayStation. What you oh! Playing, like, I'm so sorry. I told so you. I, got, oh. I told you if I got that hand so cannon sorry. on fucking PC before oh, console, fine. I was just gonna fucking delete you know. It. Any jealousy <laughs> I had immediately evaporated. It's fine. <laughs> you enjoy Wait, no, that Wait, hey, controller. Look, Wilson. This is how I feel, Wilson. You got both options, man. Do what makes you feel good, brother. Thanks. It's fine. He's got, your fucking thing. he's got the DFA at 30 glorious frames, and I've, you're going to love every minute of using that. I am, because you know what, Gary? Every hand cannon's good on PC, so who gives a fuck about the DFA? Uh-huh, and I'll say <laughs> what, what Miss Briar Rabbit said about Gary earlier for the people who don't follow on Twitter. It's not that Gary is a PC elitist. He's just fucking British. <laughs> just... Did she say that? Yes. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Yo, yo been... I agree oh, with a- with ancient aliens in the chat. <laughs> Ryan didn't hours. know. <laughs> I I agree with ancient aliens in the chat. Thirty four hours is nothing when you're stoned. Wilson calls that a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we've successfully rounded off my topic, and the conclusion that I have from it mm-hmm. is that we're all going to be playing World of Warcraft together. So I don't know where you guys heard oh. that. I heard it a few times. Um, so Revolver all... plays World of Warcraft. I am I'm a, I'm bored for that. I think we should definitely do that. It's free to play, so I can afford it after I paid my taxes. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, downloaded that other game you, you talked about earlier today too, uh, Gary. That other radical free to heights, play. radical yeah. heights. Yeah. I, BC, you, this is a perfect opportunity. Did you guys for you to... see that? Have you seen any of that game yet? Radical I Heights. I played it. I have played it. God damn, damn that game is ugly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Fuck. The frame rate questionable the colors the colors i've said this a bunch of times people are probably sick of me saying it but it looks like windows like high contrast mode to me like those colors are just ugly (laughs) it looks like it looks like the colors they choose for any other nes rom hack where they have to like change up the colors of like mike tyson's punch out (laughs) ring is like now this ugly brown or like maroon or something like it's just Never have I been more upset with colors in a video game since like Apple or like Apple Two. <laughs> I'm looking Oregon forward Trail. to I'm looking forward to trying it because I think it does have some interesting ideas in it. Um, but let's get a new artist in there. <laughs> it's it's cheap, it's janky, it's free, so whatever. And it's the people who did Lawbreakers, and they deserve a bit of a morale boost, if we're being honest. Like, well, right? And man, the, like they they tw- figured out 20... that Lawbreakers should have been free. <laughs> Seriously, the, the fact they had 20 people playing their game has broken like all-time records, so, you know, more power to them. <laughs> or one out for Lawbreakers. All right, what's our next topic? I think it's the time to get into devil. it. It's I, think, I, think, I think it's time to get into it, guys. I think it's time to get into Revolver Discusses Conspiracy Theories. So we're going to lay down just a quick couple ground rules here, all right? right. So first of all, this is to be taken lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Second of all, disclaimer in chat, we're not saying that any of this stuff is true. This is just fun to speculate. Allow your mind to be open for just... Mm-hmm. 45 more minutes to an hour, but also be objective at the same time. You know, we're having fun here. These are these are two more bring the conspiracy to light, not to prove or disprove, except I'm sure Gary will have like a million things to say about fucking everything. So with that said, our first <laughs> conspiracy is Briars. Okay, so this is a conspiracy that I've learned of recently, uh, mainly through the Joe Rogan podcast and like the guests he's had on. Uh, but then by doing a little bit more research, because I was like, "Holy shit, is this like a real thing?" So it turns out that the sugar industry was paying for studies starting in like the 1960s, and they're basically paying for the results of those studies to say that high fat diets cause heart disease, and that sugar was not a contributor, right? Mm-hmm. As as we've 
come into you know the modern era and more people have been trying out um, high protein diets as like a way to get healthy and there's been more research about how those high protein diets which are also high in fat um, affect the body it turns out that they don't a high protein diet on its own does not actually contribute to heart disease what does do it is high sugar diets and high carbohydrate diets. So like the sugar industry has literally been killing millions of people <laughs> since the 1960s. And like you can even go like and look at the USDA like food pyramid which was probably you learned in school, right? If you grew up in America, you learned this in school. The base of the pyramid is all carbohydrates. It's all bread, cereal, rice, pasta, right? That's mm -hmm. the base of the pyramid. And as you move up, you're supposed to eat, you know, less and less and less. You see meat, poultry, eggs, like that kind of stuff. Yogurt, cheese, milk, like that kind of stuff. You're supposed to eat very little of that, but eat all these processed grains yeah. and cereals. And, you know, it turns out this is all economically motivated, right? And this isn't... So... I'll, I'll give you a for instance. My life, growing up with a with a single mother, my my mother was you know very influenced by all this research. She was you know she wouldn't buy butter. She'd buy margarine. She wouldn't buy soda. She'd buy diet soda. Mm. You know, and all of these things, all of these things were presented as a healthier way to live. Right? Is you lose weight, yeah. you'd be you'd be less likely to get heart disease. Without fail. Almost all of these things have proven to be much worse for you than mm -hmm. actually just eating, you know, what they replace. Margarine a is butter, a butter sandwich. Yeah. Margarine is much worse than you for, than butter. Right. Uh, anything with trans fats in it is worse for you. And most of these process like replacements for, uh, you know, Sugar. the real thing. Yeah. Have these aspartame. Yeah. Aspartame is another one. It's you're much better off. You're, well, you're better off not eating sugar. Like yeah. and you're better off not eating sugar or any replacement for sugar because the replacements for sugar are just as bad or worse than actual worse. sugar. But the, the, the conspiracy of this, why it's in this dis discussion is because this was and is a proven conspiracy of the sugar industry, you know, spending a lot of money to do this research and influence, you know, government politics to, you know, promote sugar and to basically this, promote an unhealthy way of eating. The sad so. thing about this conspiracy is that it's been ubiquitous across almost every industry in, at this point in, in the States. I don't know if they have laws in the UK, Gary, so maybe you can fill us in on it. But uh, what, what, what they do here in the United States is these organizations that profit from things like sugar, uh, the dairy industry, uh, any industry, pharmaceuticals, they lobby politicians who write laws. Right. So what they do is they send these lobbyists to give money to p political uh, uh, campaigns and, and opponents, and they'll give these people who want money, because every person wants money, here's a few million dollars. We want you to look at this particular law that would benefit our particular organization and allow us to infiltrate a much higher demographic of people in this portion of the United States. We'll give you then money to get to get reelected that you can use to get reelected. But when this legislation comes up where we want in exchange, we scratch want you to, your back, you scratch our, we back. want you to introduce this legislation so, that helps us make money. If yeah. we roll that back just a moment there in defense of big sugar, mm -hmm. um, let's just also let's my favorite back. candy bar, big sugar. <laughs> <Yeah>. also, <laughs> also what I call Briar. <laughs> sweet dick, uh, Willie and big sugar. <laughs> So you know what? Sweet, sweet Dick guy. Willie and Big Sugar sound like 1970s pimps that I would like to go out on the evening with. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> sweet Dick Willie and... <laughs> Amazing. That's that's your new name. That's there. Sure. Done. Sweet. Forever. I accept. <laughs> so we got English Muffin, design. Atlanta Anaconda, Sweet Dick Willie and Big Sugar. Big Sugar. Big I would I request that it is spelled S U G A with no R. Yes. yes. <laughs> Done. Sure. I think it should always be put in parenthesis between Briar and Rabbit. So it's just Briar, Big, Big Sugar, Sugar, Rabbit. Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Um, in defense of Big Sugar, mm -hmm. would you really want 
a life with more longevity without sugar. Because, if it means that I honest, eat steak every day, hell yeah! Hell yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Sugar's I will, delicious. I would gladly never eat a candy bar again if the deal was, okay, if I was making like a deal, right? Never eat another candy bar, but you get steak every day. There, what is candy steak candy without candy. cheesecake? Cheesecake. Steak. It's steak. Dude, I can tell, tell you right now, dude, I have right. fallen victim to this, dude. And I think the conspiracy goes even one level further. All right. And yeah. this is, this hasn't been proposed by anyone. This just kind of came to me as you guys were talking about it. I think it trickles down into the medical field course, as well because it's a exactly. billion, multi billion upon billion dollar industry. And they love pushing those new medications and stuff like that. And uh -huh. I think the more problems you have, the more chances by, from eating sugar, the more chances you're going to have to go to the doctor. And he's going to oh. say, take two of these and call me in the morning. You know, if you, if you look at the, the opioid epidemic uh, that we have in the United States, these these or organizations that peddle these pharmaceuticals have lobbied incredibly hard in the United States to keep them free flowing to doctors and patients. Yeah. Uh, a company, Monsanto, that does a lot of the GMO research. They don't even do, they do internal research, but no one no one from an outside entity is allowed to do research on their products. They've lobbied so that their genetically modified organism, organisms and their food are able to go to people to eat in stores. They've lobbied I, to make to make it so that you can't even tell if something is GMO. Kay and I went grocery shopping yesterday. We saw about five or six things. They're starting to label them GMO, non GMO. Yeah. Because a lot I, of people are concerned about this because my, companies like Monsanto, they've been Research has shown that if you feed an animal a mouse, they usually use mice. Uh, these these um, these mice, vegetables also delicious. Yeah, they are <laughs> tree mice too. But if you feed these mice these vegetables that have been sprayed by uh, Monsanto Ready Roundup over a course of a few weeks and months, they develop huge cysts and die. And these cysts. So, have been I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gary. I'm going to say I'm I'm, I'm prepared to listen to um, your advice. And I'm prepared to take my risk with cysts and heart disease um, because as much as I might have been, um, what's the word, indoctrinated to believe it, yes. I love a slice of jam cake. Like, That's I fine, couldn't... though, Gary. It's fine, but it's, it's just nice. at least you have the information, right? Yeah, at least they, right. They, the thing about this is that people made life-changing decisions based on the information that they were provided. And the information they lie. were provided were lies. And they were known lies at the time. But I feel like in, I don't know, maybe in the UK we've had it, but they've always, like, told you sugar's bad, like, all the way through. Like, they've banned it. They've shown you, like, how many spoonfuls this is, of sugar this is are in a slightly different, though. So, the, yes, because if, if your government is t telling you that Fats and proteins are what lead to these heart diseases. When it's the sugar's bad for you, like yeah, sugar, well, well, but uh, carbohydrates, I think, is one of the things that really is a standout here. Is that you know, like all these processed like cereals and breads and, and crackers these are all and all these things, yeah, loaded with sugar, loaded with carbohydrates. You know, like you'd be surprised how much sugar is in a loaf of bread, right? And like it just wasn't that information just wasn't there. I mean. We thought that carbohydrates are okay. You know, athletes in the 90s were carbo-loading, you know, thinking that was yeah. like the best way you could do it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy, man. Like, and <clears throat> that's not even, like, touching on, like, the whole, like, preservatives aspect of stuff that they put in food, too. Well, like, let's try and keep these narrowed down. No, no, for sure. <laughs> I, I agree. Can... I'm just saying that's not even, like... I mean, it's just, that's what I'm saying. Like, it goes, no. once you start looking into sugar and stuff like that, like, the rabbit hole goes much and much deeper than, than you know, just sugars and no. things like that. Like, it's, it's an accumulation. Food. Yeah, a lot of the diet food of the, like, the 80s and 90s was, Trans they'd say fat-free, but it'd just be mm -hmm. loaded with fucking sugar. And like you said, man, bread, like, like, a loaf of bread has so much sugar. And, like, to make these conscious decisions... Like, I challenge you, look, go get your last grocery receipt. Next time you go out, try to make a conscious effort towards basically buying food that doesn't suck, you know, like what we're well, talking about. And look at how much more you are going to spend to get a real loaf of bread that isn't loaded down with sugar. Well, just don't get bread. 
It goes yeah. back to, to what Briar, oh, bread's to delicious what Briar, though. Bread is nice. I know. It goes, I know. It goes back to what Briar said. This is for everybody. You know, this is a conspiracy theory. Uh, a lot of it's probably true. Some of it may not be, but you'd no, rather know. It, it, you'd rather know than not know. Is the point. <laughs> I think that I think is you know a lot of people have never heard this, this type of stuff. This is and not so, this is not a conspiracy theory that's in doubt. This is a true conspiracy. I one hundred percent theory is is used in the scientific it's sense. Not a hypothesis. <laughs> I understand. This is as oh, researched look, by the nice. Washington Post to the New York Times. This isn't <laughs> some fucking dude on the internet saying that you know, the frogs are turning you gay. I am, <laughs> the fuck? Stand, I am taking the stand for the sugar industry, the little guys in this, right? The people who have been downtrodden time and time again by the, the, the powers that be. I, I just think, you know, ultimately, if you guys want to push the liberal agenda and tell me I can't have my sugar, that's fine. But I am going to continue chomping down on my cream cakes and my loaves of bread. And I am going to probably have a heart attack in my 40s, a happy man loaded with sugar. That's okay, Gary. But at least you're making that decision Knowing with information truth. that you know is real, as opposed yeah, to true. thinking you're ma you're making a decision for your health based on information that is bought and paid for. You have to live to see Gal Gun Four. I need mean, to. <laughs> you have to. Gary's going to stop eating sugar altogether. And Gary, there are very healthy alternatives to sugar that are natural, like stevia. You guys look that up. It's a leaf. Uh, but you can yep. buy stevia in a health store. Health store. It looks exactly like sugar. It tastes like licking a cat's ass. It's not That's, nice. I don't know if you've ever you licked a cat's ass. I have. No, so you, you realize that that episode of South Park about getting high off the cat piss was fake, right? Like he didn't. Wait, what? I do know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> No, yeah, I just I, I just like shit cats. foods. Like trans I know how bad trans fats are. I know how bad everything is. But trans fats are horrible. It's delicious. It's beyond yeah. bad. But uh, Gary, look up. Uh, go to the the store and buy some stevia and just try it for a week. And I challenge you guys and everybody on the show Sweet who's watching and listening sleep. to watch a Netflix film. It's called What the Health. H e a l t h. What the health? Watch that. I promise you it'll change your life. Kate and I watched that a year yeah, ago. I've had it. In the UK, and we have that shit, right? It's called Truvia. It looks like cocaine. It tastes like ass. Mm, I said okay. Stevia. Yeah, it's <laughs> Truvia. Is Hold on, made I'm going to do a couple else. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's extracted from the plant species stevia. It's made into a, a sweetener product called Truvia. It's like a natural sweetener. We have it in the UK. It's fucking horrible, Beast. I don't know what you're I don't know, I don't know why they changed the name there. It tastes just like sugar. So when they, I was a little kid, right, my, UK, my mom They changed the name me. of everything, dude. My Gary mom. calls a compass a directional indicator. My mum would give me a, a bowl of strawberries <laughs> in the morning, right, and a big bowl of sugar, and I'd cut a strawberry in half, and I'd dip it in the sugar, and little Gary was happy to go about his day, and I'd That's do that. That's why Gary whole... turned out so sweet. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, why, do you, why is he such a pervert, then? What was the cause of that? <laughs> also, why he's sugar. got diabetes now. <laughs> <laughs> Working on type 2. <laughs> Getting that off the checklist. But no, thank you for enlightening me, Big Sugar. Um, as you your name is now. If you want to take advice yeah. about sugar, you better get it from Big Sugar. Because you know, he knows his shit when it comes to that sugar. Uh, I right. learned around a condor, I feel like brown sugar was such an obvious choice there. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Big Sugar That's and brown perfect. sugar. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually is. It works. All right, so the very next topic is one that... Uh, came to me fairly recently. I think over the last few months, I started to hear about it. And I, I did research into it and looked at some of these facts and it really blew my mind. We're going to talk about the Mandela. Facts. Yeah, facts. The facts. facts are, yeah, these are facts. This is okay. not something that, I like that something, you bring it facts. This is good. It's the only way to roll, Briar. All right. We're going to talk about the Mandela Effect conspiracy. Now, the Mandela Effect is a collective misremembering of a fact or event. Uh -huh. I'm is, opening that, Google for this. Yeah, you're gonna read. Exactly hilarious. Right. I've heard, I've heard about this before, and it's it's well worth it's, having Google open for. Yeah, various <laughs> theories have been proposed to explain what causes it. Some more sensible than others. So I got a list of very popular Mandela effects, and if you guys are older than 15, you're gonna remember some of these. And actually, pretty much everyone that I got on this list, I remember it being the alternate reality uh, uh, misremembering. So no, wait a minute. Hold on. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My bad. No, I want to hear what you got to say, Brian. Well, what I, is the I mean, there's effect? the Mandela effect, right? But then there's also the conspiracy that the Mandela effect is us like remembering an alternate 
reality. Alternate reality. Yes, yeah. and I'll is get that, into that. I, what, I wanna, I got, what I want to know, Beastly, I want you to, A, explain the Mandela effect, and then B, what causes it? I'm not prepared to go that fucking far. I am. At least explain the Mandela effect. The, the Mandela effect is when you or a group of people, usually it's a mass mis, uh, misremembering of something. You remember something from a film or a music or something that's popular culture being a specific way. You remember hearing phrases in a movie. You remember seeing the title of something. And then if you look at that same thing today, you realize either it was spelled differently, not the way you remember it. The lyrics were different than you remember it. The words never existed that you remember, and many people remember the same thing. And so, the the kind of the conspiracy theory is they are using some unknown to uh, layman technology to affect the past. To CERN. affect CERN technology. CERN. All right. So now, yeah. give us some examples to explain exactly what this Mandela effect is. Okay. So the very first one on my list is the Berenstein Bears, which mm. is a popular ma uh, uh, children's book in the eighties. And I remember the Berenstein Bears, uh, very, very popular when I was a kid growing up. And now if you look at any Ber Berenstein Bears memorabilia, stuff from back in the 60s, I mean, 70s and 80s, it's spelled the Berenstein Bears, and now it's called the Berenstein Bears. So it's it's B-E-R-E-N-S-T-A-I-N. But I, remember I would have vividly had, as a child, called them the Berenstein Bears if that's the way it was spelled. Absolutely. Me and many. Bears. I this this. Hear me out. Okay. This book, these series of books, were very huge in my life as a kid. Very. Um, I was not. I read two things in the library. We started going to the library around like fourth grade when I was in school. We took like daily trips to the library. Mm -hmm. Berenstain Bears, and uh, UFOlogy were the two books that i'd always check out even as a kid man i was into ufos and aliens and shit uh but i loved all these books man and i remember checking them out and taking them and they were and my they're, mother they were the my mother reading bears. them to me and saying the Bernstein bears not Bernstein. like even it's very weird man because this isn't just something that like was kind of sort of in my life like this i read the shit out of these books as a kid and there's just, I don't know, it's really weird. Like, it, there's, go ahead, BC, there's so many more. Yeah, there are. And, and I'm sure that uh, Gary, you and Briar are going to remember some of these as well that obviously, it, well, evidently never happened. I remember a period of time in the late 80s, and I was a kid, but I remember it being big news that there was 51 states in the United States. Uh, you, and I was, you could tell me on. there's 65, I'd believe you. I have no but, point of reference. But, but see, it's it's not just little things like like Oscar Mayer being spelled differently or let him, um, let him I want to hear like give me some of these because that's what I'm saying. It's like there's even been parts in the Bible like um, piss off said in chat. There's been massive. There's even been like preachers and stuff who swear growing up that that passage, the lion shall lay with the lamb was different. You know what I mean? It goes into the spelling of Oscar Mayer. It goes into I don't remember. Wait, wait, who, you're you're uh, you're skipping these. Like I don't know what the I, fuck I, you're talking I, about I, here. I, I want to go through a, a couple yeah. of them. So of course there was 51 states, which happened to not ever happen. That situation never occurred. Another one is I got about seven or eight. Gary. No, no, no. How many so, states? He means states. There, there are 50 states. There's never been a 51st state. No. Okay. Ever. In, isn't that Alaska I, or Hawaii? That's 50. Have you tried counting them again? God damn it, Gary. <laughs> All right, carry on. Maybe one. So got the, ne over. the next one in my list is from uh, Queens. Uh, you guys remember We Are the Champions? Yes. Yeah. Who Does doesn't? anyone remember hearing We Are the Champions of the, of world, the world at the yes. end? Yeah. Yes. Never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Said, nope. Never happened. Listen to the next time you listen to the song. And it's, it's this phenomenon never, has been recorded with happened. other people. So George Clooney and uh, some other famous actress, they did like a uh, kind of like a cash cab sort of oh, episode thing. That's clearly a lie. They, they picked up, <laughs> they picked up random people, and they're like, "Look, George Clooney and some other famous actress are your drivers," and they put that song on, and all four of them at the end of that yeah, song of said, world. "Of the world," and then it they all looked happened. at each other. Did he ever do it like, in concert? Up? Maybe. Yeah. Brian, no. as, as a kid growing up, I swear to you, never seen him in concert. 
of the world is at the end of that song, but now, according to all history, even if you pick up a record, that's why the Mandela effect is so scary. If you were to get a record that's been in your, your attic or your garage for 25 years and you were to play it, of the world doesn't exist. Exactly, but you remember it. Just like, you yeah, know, I, I do. Spoke- it's just like if I was to go to the library and look for Berenstein Bears, all the books, probably Take the exact Berenstein. same ones. Give me another one. Read. Give me another good okay, one. Okay, the next one is Sex in the City. Now, I remember this. It was called Sex and the City when when the show first came yes. out. And then it changed to Sex in the City. That one can is kind of small. Like, yeah. I want to go for a big one here. The Berenstein like, okay. one and Hold Sex on. in the City are both kind of like, that's like... How about, how about this one? Meaningless to me. What color is Seed back to, Hold on. What color is Seed Reefio? He's gold. White and blue. No, he's gold. No, seriously. Oh, gold. What? Sorry. He's gold. Well, it depends on what movie you're talking gold about. Gold and? Silver. Just, I, remember, just, why, I remember him being all gold. I never had a gold toy with a fucking silver arm, and I had every single well, That was the new one. He had a red arm, didn't he, in the new one? That's what I'm saying, man. Like, it, it's really weird stuff. Like, I... Okay. I collected Star Wars action figures from the 80s and the 90s. Um, the 80s ones were not in the packaging, but all the 90s ones I kept in the packaging. I vividly, I the pictures that I see of the toy, it is very Captain fucking obvious <laughs> that he has a fucking silver arm in the toy. And the toy does? <laughs> the toy does. And, Shit. And like, and but there were multiple editions of the toy. There was one that blew apart, and there was one that didn't. Did they it both have a silver on arm? What company you're talking about? These are legit licensed Hasbro. Star Wars. I'm talking about the Hasbro yes, stuff. Yes, the Hasbro yeah. one. Yeah. I don't remember uh, any I of the newer ones. I thought ones. it was all all gold. That's my I memory. kept them all in the package, first of all. So any of the newer ones, taking them out and actually playing with them, I have no experience with. But I do not remember C-3PO, my one of my favorite Star Wars toys, having a silver arm. Yeah, and, and I don't either. My entire life growing up, he was always gold. Uh, some of these ones, Briar, are going to get you, okay? okay? Can we can we debunk Ooh. Queen quickly? Because it's been mentioned in chat as well. Okay. Um, it's been researched. The 1977 it, it, original release did not have the line. Uh-huh. However, the 81 re-release did have it. Ah, so there was a really? four-year gap. If you listen to it between 77 and 81, it didn't have it. But uh-huh. I guess most people would have heard it after 81. Yeah. Probably. yeah. And then yeah. I wonder okay. what re-releases like have it and don't have it, too. Like the classic Queen um, box set album kind of thing that a lot of people have listened to now since... Uh, it came out in like the late '90s. I bet that's the version a lot of people listen to now. Okay. So I wonder if that has it or doesn't have it. Question: Who remembers Jiffy peanut butter? No. No. Hundred percent. No. Jiff. You don't. Okay, that's Jiffy. that's that's the thing. I remember Jiffy growing up. Wilson, you remember Jiffy or Jiff? I I remember Jiffy. I remember. I remember Jiffy peanut butter growing up. Jiffy never existed. It's always been Jiff. That's People blame why. the Simpsons on that, and I never saw that episode. I, I, I never watched of, The Simpsons. Um, I saw a lot of Simpsons, but it was never in, that influential in my life. Who no, remembers, I, don't even, I remember Jif. Moms who, who moms who love their kids or something love Jif or choosy moms. Choosy moms choose Jif. I think it was choosy moms. Yeah, was, that yeah. sounds it's like just, some shit I've heard before. Yeah. Yeah, it was Jif. It was never Jiffy. Who remembers Jiffy Lube is the place you get your, your <laughs> fucking <laughs> your uh, oil changed. I so know. Like, you're the old break these, job, if you know what I mean. Some of Real these legend. are kind of minor <laughs> the old break job. Like, there's been some major ones. Like, days. Y'all seen the movie Days of Confuse, right? Yeah. Who hasn't? You know what I mean, Briar? Yeah. You've seen Days of Confuse? Of course. There's a scene at the beginning of Days of Confuse before they're getting ready to get out of school, their last day of school. And one of the girls is sitting on the desk spinning a globe. On the globe, to the left side to the west of Australia is New Zealand. And there's a big, there's a lot of people that remember looking at a globe as a kid and seeing a landmass to the west of Australia. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's just you as a kid not remembering that. But for some reason in the movie, there is a landmass to the west, like this landmass that people remember not where it should be. And you could argue, oh, that was just a prop. But, like, why would you make a globe when you could just go buy one? It would make it a lot easier. And you'd think there would be some sort of level of integrity out there that you're not necessarily allowed to make fake globes. Like, you really think there's 
one guy out there that's making these globes for school is just like, ha ha, fuck it. I'm from <laughs> yes. New Zealand here. If, if it was you my know? job to make globes, that is exactly <laughs> what I'd do. Exactly. I would add you just make countries. everything look like a dick. You just make everything look like a dick. That's, that's <laughs> everything. <laughs> You just if, not every globe, but every like one in a thousand globes, you just add a fake country <laughs> and just Gary. just troll people. Why not? I remember Brian. We all agreed that if Gary owned a business, he would be a professional troll, and this proves yeah. it. Yeah. He's a globe maker that wants to fuck his every thousandth customer. <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, give me some more of these. Who remembers Curious George having a tail hanging from his yeah. tail? Yeah, he's a monkey. He has a tail. He, ne- he never had a tail ever. Uh, Why doesn't okay. he have a tail? He just doesn't. If you watch the cartoon, he's never had a tail. It's documented he's never had Are there a... any ape or primate-like species that don't have a tail? I don't know. Rottweiler monkeys? I don't know. Apes don't have tails. Monkeys have uh, tails. Rottweiler. Apes don't, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. Who remembers Who remembers Darth Vader's... Uh, I'll just do it this way. What did Darth Vader say to reveal that he was Luke Skywalker's father, Briar? What did he I, say? He said, I am your father. What did he say right before he said, I am your father? Uh, most people, a, a, not most, but a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people just, including he myself. He hesitated and made a noise. A lot of people, including myself, remember him saying, Luke, I am your father. Yeah, yeah. But he never said Luke. And even though people have said that for you know decades, the, the actual turn that was used But isn't that completely course. explainable by just people, like, they want to make sure you know what the reference is, so they say... Yeah, but, it, but it's still the put same Put it together, time. and then... It could totally be factual, and people could all be Take wrong. it a step further. Tommy Boy. Uh-huh. Where he's talking into the fan. Luke. Luke. Remember that, that scene yeah. in Tommy Boy yeah. where he's like... That might be why I remember that, because I watched a shitload of Tommy I Boy. I never it watched... It could be, right? It could be that, like, pop culture... Yeah. popularize something that isn't completely accurate, which, you know. But I, I don't ever recall hearing Darth Vader say, no, I am your father. That's the actual term from the film. Yeah, because if you hear the reference, he's like, did Obi-Wan tell you what happened to your father? He's like, he told me enough. He told me you killed him. And he says, no, no I am your father. I fucked your Somebody mother. Somebody <laughs> With a I lightsaber. Oscar Mayer Wiener. It made her was... fucking scream. Imagine if he said that, Luke, I boned your old mother. James Earl <laughs> Jones would not sign and then on. And he had to think that. about it for a second. Wait a minute, that means you're my dad. I de her with my lightsaber. My God, I de <laughs> All right, quick, quick one. She Queen Amidala was a screamer. Yeah, she found, <laughs> she found the DFA down for anal. Queen <laughs> Amidala. <laughs> Oh, Briar. <laughs> I, I wonder who's being toxic today, Briar. He's so fucking toxic. All right, was, so who remembers was, uh, how Oscar Meyer was spelled, the, 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 the Meyer word? How was that spelled in your recollection? M-E-Y-E-R? M-E- wait a minute, wait, hold on. My wiener has a name. It's O-S-E-A-R. My, yeah, my wiener has, my wiener a, second has a second name. M E Y E R. It's M-A-Y-E-R. Ah. Oh. Mandela effect, Briar. Mull that one over. Does the Monopoly Wait, did man... We, did, we, did we fuck that up now, just Briar? Did we fuck that up? M-E-R. Yeah, you both were wrong. M-E-R. But but that's but that's what I M-A-Y-E-R. remember, too. I remember it being M-E, but it's actually M-A. The song was... M-A? It has a first name. It's Yeah, and you spell Oscar. Oh, that, that's, that one's kind of fucked up. All right, so the Monopoly man from the Monopoly game. Who remembers... The Monopoly man wearing a monocle. With his yeah, he had a monocle because fucking even... Never Jim Carrey... had... Never had bullshit. A Jim right. Carrey called it out in Ace Ventura 2 when he punched that guy, or he looked at him and said, You must be the Monopoly guy because he had the monocle. <laughs> I remember that shit, and you yeah. punched it just like you did, too. He <laughs> never had a monocle. If you look up Monopoly, you look up the first board board games of you know the creation of this game, he never ever wore a monocle. Am I confusing the Monopoly guy and the Pringle guy? Pringle, Pringle guy, has guy. A monocle, right? Pringle guy has a monocle, yeah. The peanut. So this is the last one. This is the last one on my list, and I'm gonna look in the comments to see if anyone else came up with anything else. But the in Snow White, the the White Queen's phrase, "Mirror, mirror on the wall." Who remembers her saying that? Mirror, 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 on, mirror the wall. on the wall. I actually don't was, think I've ever watched that movie. The only the reason I know freak. about that quote is through through pop culture. Don't inform me of it. It's mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the prettiest of them all? Who's, who's the fairest, fairest of them all? Ferris. Uh, but that's not what she said. She said magic mirror on the wall. Mm. And but I've I, never know, watched the movie. So my yeah, only so, interaction with that 
quote is through it's pop true. culture. So it's like a game with telephone, right? It's like this does not prove anything about like parallel worlds. It's just it's just displaying like the the telephone effect where if I whisper something in Beasley's ear, and then Beasley whispers it in Wilson's ear, and then Wilson whispers it in Gary's ear, I'm likely to hear a different thing than what I said. It it may have the same meaning, is but that, it, it might have a like, is that what you guys different... call that in the United States? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's different. In the UK, maybe slightly racist. It's called Chinese whispers. You oh. fucking racist! <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? And it, back me up in the UK. This this thing that they called telephone is just Chinese whispers, isn't it? We're waiting for the so, UK chat to catch so up. These, these are just a lot of the examples that come up when you Google them. When you like scratch the surface of Mandela effect, there's a lot of people that have had some really fucked up Mandela uh, experiences. There's a lot of people who, and a lot of people might not be familiar with Tank Boy. You guys know who Tank Boy is? Mm -mm. There was a, uh, there's a very, very, there's a very popular photo of a young Chinese boy protesting, standing in front of a line of tanks. And there's a lot of people in the tank stopped for the boy as you should. And that was like a huge factor uh, i forget what time of year it was there was like some sort of like chinese revolution or Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square. Yeah. 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 yes thank you and that was like a huge fucking deal like the whole world saw that there's a lot of people who remember that very grotesquely differently and that the tank didn't stop like there's a lot of people who were traumatized it's by and, what and they remember continued. yeah there's a lot of people who remember the tank continuing and it being an even it more big deal than what it was no he he it didn't run him over it yeah it test. stopped it, he, he he went left and right, and he just moved in front of it, and I thought it just continued afterwards. But, like, the point of it is there's a lot of people who remember the tank not stopping and just, like, running him over. I know that's very grotesque, and that obviously didn't happen. But, like, that's what I'm saying. There's there's very small effects. There's very big effects. Here's and one. The ultimate thing about it is is that they think, and I say they, you know, the collective conspiracy theorists or whatever, think that, the stuff that's going on at CERN at the Large Hadron Collider is having effects that either they're not aware of or that they are doing this stuff intentionally aware of the effects that it is potentially changing or creating these said multiverses where you may remember it one way and I may remember it another and that could potentially mean that there was some sort of a split in the multiverse between me and you you know what i mean like it, it gets very deep and very weird but a lot of people think that the main antagonist for this is Sir, the large hadron collider what i want to do a quick rapid fire the last i'm gonna go want... with uh <laughs> the telephone game <laughs> it so, just seems like a simpler solution what, to this issue. What, what is what is the it. famous quote chinese from... whispers you mean right <laughs> what is the famous quote from forrest gump Life is like a box of chocolates. Briar? Bend over, Jessica. <laughs> is it Jenny? Jenny, I'm I want to do it doggy Dan, style. She, yeah. We were watching Dan, Forrest Gump for a different like fucking reason. But, but most, yeah. people, most people would say <laughs> that... Quote. Most people would say that life is like a box of chocolates is a famous quote. But he I'm never sorry, said I'm sorry I ruined your Black movie. Panther party. Yeah. What's, what's, <laughs> what's best one. about that beastly is that it says the quote that everyone remembers on the box of the movie, but he says it differently in the movie. What's in the he film, say in the movie? He says life was like a box of chocolates. <laughs> there's also there's also a video That's such a evidence. small grammatical difference. Hold on, though. hold on, but hold on. I though. remember hearing it though, Brian. Hear, hear me out. It do you remember it, hearing it, or do you? Has your because you know that your memories change over time, right? Is like the way you remember something is is not necessarily how it happened. You combine different events in your head that form new memories. Sure. So, like you might be thinking of something that happened to you when you're five years old and think you remember it as clear as day, but you talk to somebody who's standing right next to you and they'll have a completely different memory of that event. All right, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not 20 years old. I'm as old as you. I wasn't fucking five and four as Gunt came out. Let me so ask that's you what I'm question. saying. Well, that's what I'm saying, though, is that your your memory of that specific thing has changed, and especially if you repeatedly hear it getting misquoted. You could eventually, especially, you know, Group you could eventually think that yeah. was the. Hold on, I I can kind of add to this, and you could take it as you will, either towards what Beasley's saying or towards what Briar's trying to say. 
on the box it of the movie it says the misquote that everyone remembers on the box of the so movie but well, he doesn't say doesn't it in the, no, hold it on now? no no hold on it oh, might it might because you might have read the box and subconsciously thought that that's the line and then when you actually see the movie you're like wait a minute that's not right but like there's also like James the whole things with James Earl Jones and Vader and Luke I am your father like he's been on record in interview misquoting the movie that he fucking starred in <laughs> this is awesome he said luke when i when i read the lines luke i am your father i said oh this is good oh. you know what i mean like you know like this is the I almost guy like your the version of james so l james but on his own right so ask That's him why what it is you know what i mean I, I, and like i said it being written on the box could either that could have been the way the line was written and then they chose uh tom hanks ad-libbed it or fucked it up on his own, and that's what they just ran with. Or it could be that CERN fucks some shit up, and it just will change one little detail. No one will ever recognize that quote from Forrest Gump. Like, <laughs> and that's what quotes. they chose to change. It's a, of all history to change. We could words. kill Hitler, or, you know, I've never really been happy with the way he said, no, I am your father. I think that should be changed, too. <laughs> Oh, that's this one actually yeah. uh, got me. When you put it like that, it all adds up now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and I'm going to end this topic on this. I'm going to tell you guys how I learned about this because, you know, this is kind of a newer uh, conspiracy theory. I'm, I'm, I love conspiracy theories. I think some of them are shit, but, you know, I don't think that all of them can be thrown away because if everything is a conspiracy theory, there's no such thing as a real conspiracy. But I was uh, at a restaurant recently, and the guy who was taking my order after he took it, he said, spell Fruit Loops. It was Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Mandela brought you your Boom! steak. <laughs> Theory Explosion. <laughs> but he said, spell Fruit Loops. So I said, F-R-U-I-T. He said, no, it's F-R-O-O-T. I was like, what do you mean? He said, the Mandela effect. He's, this guy was really into it. He came from around the really counter and <laughs> while they were back there making the writer was telling you this. Yes. Man, he you was working to... hard for that tip. Dude, he didn't that get shit, shit was on his mind. If you're just going to approach. He walked out to the person. car with me. He walked outside to the car. I mean, literally, I had a bag of food I was going to take home. He's out there talking to me about this stuff. And he just was mentioning all these things. Did and, he work there at all? Or did he just have a uniform on that looked like. He was an employee. Uh, the he last stole time some went... of your food without you just hustling. <laughs> Let me carry this for you. And he does He's that like, all day. Watch this home. while I blow this fucking dude's mind and then steal all his shit while he fucking <laughs> no, just No, like, just one. Just one. <laughs> item you, you hustle it all day you know what it's i mean a conversational gambit i've never had someone come up to me and go sir spell fruit loops for me and that's, that's their opening line like jesus christ dude i i have fruit loops in this house like a lot because i have two kids who really like fruit loops never realized it was spelled f-r-o-o-t it's really <laughs> there's probably fruit loops right now in this house <laughs> That one got my mom, too. I told my mom that one because I fell down the Mandela hole, and I was like, I got to call everyone. I'm going to call my mom. See what when you, when you learn about a new conspiracy theory and, and it kind of freaks you out like this one did me. Well, there's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, Wilson, I contacted every people. It I didn't goes even bigger to than just, years. like, Fruit Loops and Oscar Mayer, like the John F. Kennedy, uh, like the car that he drove. Like, a lot of people don't remember it being a six-seater. They remember it being a four-seater. You know what I mean? Like, just really weird uh, shit. Like I was distracted by the man's head getting blown off i didn't count the number of seats <laughs> ouch too soon too soon uh, people people remember billy graham dying years ago years ago you know that's one of the mandela effects that really can't be explained but you know i didn't follow it but that's something that a lot of people say that they remember is that he died like in the, in the 90s and so it's, it's a strange thing of course we won't solve it here on revolver but you know it's one of our conspiracies to throw into the bucket let's move on to the next all right, Who's next? now that fucking Fisher Price, my first little conspiracy is over here. Uh, let's get into the real deal here. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, again, chat, have an open mind. We're having fun here. We're not stating any of this as fact, all right? So this is one that's a little weird. <laughs> Disclaimer, <laughs> right? trigger this is, warning. This is a little weird, all right? Uh -huh. I don't know if you guys have heard of the hollow moon theory. Mm -hmm. fact, no, I've heard a lot about this. Enlighten me. Enlighten me. I've heard nothing. 
Gary's ready for this one because I blew his fucking mind with the Black Knight satellite the other week, dude. Um, I, was, I, I had a nine-minute so, YouTube video of you. The, you. You narrated me through it. It was fantastic. Here's a brief introduction or to the topic, okay? Many smart people from astronauts, Nobel Prize winners, to more people a hell of a lot smarter than any of us here have been puzzled by the moon's perplexing features or even struggled how to find how the damn thing even came to be. Many different theories out there, but one that stands out that could make some sense is the hollow moon theory. Here are some quotes from a people a hell of a lot smarter than you or I. I love how you say that. It makes us... <clears throat> pertaining to hollow moon. So hear me out here. Give me, give me a few minutes here so you can process this. Isaac Asimov, American author and professor of biochemistry at Boston University, says, we cannot help to come to the conclusion that the moon by all rights ought not be there. The fact that it is one of the strokes of luck is almost too good to accept. Small planets such as Earth with weak gravitational fields might well lack satellites in general. When a planet does have satellites, those satellites are much smaller than the planet itself. Therefore, even if Earth has a satellite, there would be every reason to suspect at best that it would be a tiny world, mm -hmm. perhaps 30 miles in diameter. But that is not so. Earth is not only has a satellite, but it has a giant satellite, 2,160 miles in diameter. How is it then that tiny Earth has one amazing moon, which Who's has no atmosphere or magnetic field, is basically a freak of nature? Who said and that? And an an another... Who said that? Go ahead. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Uh, American author and professor of biochemistry at Boston University, Isaac Asimov. Oh, the science fiction <clears throat> writer. Yes. He is also a science fiction writer. <laughs> a lot of those guys are. Okay, well, now hear, hear me out. Here, here's on. another, real quick, Wilson, another feature about the moon that a lot of people don't know is it has, it doesn't spin. No, that's, uh, I'm getting to that. It's called geosynchronous okay. orbit. Mm. It's the only satellite Body, in the yeah. observable universe that doesn't spin with the it, planet. It looks at the Earth constantly. Now hear me out. Nobel Prize winner for chemistry, not a science fiction writer. <laughs> Smack says, that hole. I'm terribly... <laughs> I'm terribly puzzled by the rocks from the moon. In particular, they're very rich in high titanium content. Okay, now just keep that in mind. That's not too mind blowing until you get into some of the other stuff that people have experienced. It would seem that the moon, and this is Dr. Gordon McDonald from NASA. It would seem that the moon is more like a is more like a hollow than a uh, homogeneous sphere. I've surmised that the data must be wrong, but it wasn't. Is what he says. So this is so NASA. What do they this is think big NASA. This is yeah. now. Yeah. Hear me out. Hear, we're getting to it. Okay. Right. There's there's a few more here, and keep in mind these are these are really smart people who have dedicated a lot of fucking time to what they do, and they're not just fucking Google warriors. So uh, the lunar orbitive Luber ugh, Dr. Sean Solomon, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the lunar orbiter experiments had vastly improved knowledge of the moon gravitational field and indicated the frightening possibility that the moon might be hollow. Super Ken Johnson, supervisor of data and photo control department during the Apollo mission, the moon not only rang like a bell when the orbiter mm -hmm. struck, but the whole moon wobbled in such a precise way that it was almost as if it had a, a gigantic hydraulic dampener struts inside of it. That's scary <laughs> as fuck, man. We knew them, and this is... Lon Hood from University of Arizona. We knew that the moon's core was small. We didn't know it was this small. This really does add weight to the idea of the moon's origin is unique, unlike any other terrestrial body in the known observable universe. Um, Carl Sagan, this is where we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, the last two. Carl Sagan, we no introduction. <clears throat> a natural satellite cannot be a hollow object. Think about that. A natural satellite cannot be hollow so that's the conspiracy is that if it is hollow it's not a natural it's not a natural object which means yeah. that a lot of people it's made by something a lot something. of people like mikhail vassin alexander can't pronounce your last name the associate academy of sciences in 1970 just proposed the theory of is the moon a creation of alien intelligence you know what I mean? So there's a lot of these things. You know, uh, the word was used earlier by Gary. We are indoctored to 
you know, when you're a kid, they say, oh, we know how the moon was formed. It collided with the earth and all this stuff came up and there's a different gravitational field and they got pulled into each other and all that stuff. But we really don't know. Taught us all sorts of bullshit when I was in high school. It's crazy. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the point, though. Like, and I'm not saying that the moon is hollow. I'm not saying that the moon was created by an alien intelligence. I don't fucking know. But Smart neither man. does everybody else. That's the mm -hmm. point. That's the head scratcher is that we don't even know that the earth goes crust mantle core. We've only been able to dig down the farthest record of uh, drilling is like 16 miles or something like that. It's like we really don't even know that. Like there's a lot of well, unknown stuff the, out there. The, there. There have been some like if you guys should know, but we've only landed on the moon once. That's a really big question. Why have we only landed there one time? And never gone back. There's also satellite images or images of from uh, our ships that we sent past the moon of the dark side of the moon. And I'm sure Wilson, you've seen these images before. There's a castle on the back okay, side, on the so dark side of the moon. That that's kind of that's kind of touching. Like it, it is it is going a little further. Suddenly googling uh, <laughs> castle. There's castle. No, on the moon. it's not a castle structure. There's that's what, I mean, that's what they call it. That's what they this call is, it. This is it's, nothing new, man. There's people that think that they have spotted. Very obvious structures with right acute, you know, right or angles, acute yeah. angles, you know, things that just you don't really see a whole lot in nature. And nature, I'm, I'm going to warn you, a lot of these fucking photos and shit are very Giant fucking blurry. And you alien do castle and some of them, which I hate when you're looking at a photo and they show the outline for you. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like it where photos try to make up your mind for you and say totally. This is where you need to be focusing like yeah, i just googled castle on the moon i'm not seeing anything that <laughs> Ooh, what happened to the face on the moon or was that the that's face on, on mars oh, that's on that's on mars supposedly yeah they, uh, they actually just took another picture of that just to shut everybody up <laughs> and uh <laughs> but, like, like the point is the point is you know like we don't you know, I'm you look at sit, the castle on the moon now, here right? and say that like the moon landing and stuff didn't happen. And I used to be a huge subscriber to that whole conspiracy theory. But like, I really do think that we did go to the moon. I think that a lot of the footage that we saw was bullshit and that it was a contingency plan in case those guys died and that we needed to have some sort of footage to get to the moon because there was no way we were losing that fucking race with Russia. There's no way it just Ooh. wasn't happening. I don't and know if like, you've ever Googled hollow moon at all and looked at images, oh yeah, but fun. someone's kindly done a cross section for me so that I can see the little alien city that lives inside it. <laughs> is, it is it the one that looks almost like turbines in there? Yeah. Yeah, that's anything. a good one. I'm looking at that one too. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. You see, I'm surprised that, that, that you didn't just send us that picture because that would have explained I don't think, it perfectly. I don't think if, you, if, you, if I subscribed to, if I really undoubtedly believed that the moon was hollow i wouldn't suspect it to be some sort of a spacecraft i would expect it to be some sort of an observation device because well, i you, watched uh, doctor who out. and there was a dragon in there actually so absolutely really? at least two i mean there depends two? if it's mating season depends. Well, I, think, I, mean, well, <laughs> I think the egg when it when it left it laid another egg which became the new moon it depends if the atlanta anaconda <laughs> had stopped by recently or not let's see but um shit i totally lost my train of thought on um Got distracted by the Atlanta Anaconda. The Anaconda be fucking people up, man. My bad, bro. <laughs> no, it's Shit. all good. Um, oh, no, I was going to say, like I said, I wouldn't necessarily believe that it was an alien space vehicle. I think that first contact with aliens won't be direct biological entity to biological entity. I think there's such a vastness in the universe that you have to travel that the only way that you would be able to would be to send a machine. Do, do you guys believe in extraterrestrials? 100%. Uh, what do you mean? Do what I you believe that? Really? You got to be a little more specific than uh, that. Well, I, I like. Let me just go through this real quick. Well, it's I, a simple question. There's, you can't really dumb it down or make it any more cryptic than that. Like it's. Well, it's, it's a loaded question an because if you ask me if I believe in extraterrestrials, some people may believe may may uh, think that I believe that they landed here and that were they're you know no that's probing not us up at. the ass all the time. Do I believe that there are there are you know, other, you know, beings out there in space, I think the probability of it being so is almost, it's almost it's ridiculously low. To, yeah. you know, it's not impossible, but it's ridiculously in the favor of there's got to be, right? That's what I'm saying. It's, but it's, I, I, I don't think it's impossible. Do I well, think that there's aliens um, flying around probing people up the ass? No, I think that's all fucking horseshit. I used to, uh, 
years ago, probably within the last five years, I've completely done a 180. But like you, Wilson, I, I grew up in ufology. That's what I was really into. Cryptozoology and ufology from elementary school on through high school. And so I, I did a lot of research into UFOs and, you know, close encounters of the third, fourth, first kind. And, and uh, actually, J. Allen Hynek and Jacques Vallée are two of the premium, premier ufologists in history. They did a 10-year study of people who were uh, who had interaction with extraterrestrials, seen them, and had them actually come into their rooms and people who claimed to have been abducted. abducted. And after their 10-year um, uh, investigation, they came to the realization that UFOs are demonic. Here's the problem that I have with the whole Demon thing. UFOs. Here, the no, next hold level. on. Now that's, I'm sold. That's a different, <laughs> hold, hold, hold on one second, Wilson. Now I'm let, sold. Let me, let me finish. This is real. Do I they mean, have tails? Because I remember my demonic U UFOs have a tails. Now, when I look at pictures of demonic UFOs, no tails. Mandela effect. <laughs> God damn you, bro. <laughs> Jimmy Mike in the chat has got the right idea there. Watch Ancient Aliens, man. That shit's fire. Like, Dude, I that just... dude's hair is fire. Like... <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> struggle to, I struggle are, to find. Hands. You're getting me. You're getting me too all over the place here because, like, I used to subscribe to the ancient alien theory, ancient alien theory, and I think that it's not the first time that society has been technologically advanced. I think humans built the pyramids. I think we did a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of evidence and a lot of debate going on right now in the archaeological archaeological society that we've been around a lot longer. But my problem. Like Briar was talking about, my problem with the whole UFO thing is, yes, the universe is infinite and expanding at an even faster, more infinite rate. So fast, in fact, that light will never reach it, thus making it, in a sense, another universe. You know what I mean? If light's never going to reach there, we're never going to be able to get there. So it's technically another universe. I think it's almost probably Im it's impossible for there not to be life. Did Do I think they've been be here? Black? Mandela. Do I think they've been here? Uh, at least once. Yeah, I do. There's a lot of fucked up shit that people have seen in the sky and recorded a lot of credible people, astronauts, pilots, military employees, mm -hmm. who have seen air traffic controllers, who have seen and documented some very messed up stuff in the sky. Now, that begs the question with me. This is, this is the question that comes up with me. What is powering those things that we're seeing in the sky, and well, why is well, it not? Hold on, hold on. Why, if it's not aliens, it's us, and we're up there zipping around with some sort impossible. of a power source right. that we don't know about. So why the fuck are we still on fossil fuels yeah. if that type of technology is possible? So hear me well, out. Hold on. Either it's <laughs> aliens or it's us. Either way, it's not cool. Is my <laughs> that's my fucking do you get what I'm saying? Like Look, that's not cool. There is, Hold there on, is one... one answer that you can blindly lay at anything and it served, you know, world peace so far is just blame the Russians. If there's something that's unexplained <laughs> and you don't know who's done it, just blame the Russians. If well, there's something well, in the sky know, probably um... Russians. From from the stories, at least, that were told of top secret and people who uh, were in the know at, like, Area 51 and, and in Ohio at the uh, the secret base there, that these ships, these extraterrestrial ships that, you know, our scientists, top secret scientists have had access to, there are no moving parts. There are no engines in these things. They, they float. They hover. There's no sound. I'm sure you've heard this, Wilson. Uh, but the thing about UFOs that kind of skews the logic is... They've been tra tracked on radar making right angle turns at speeds Mach 7 and 8 that would kill any human Beyond being. Mach 7 and 8, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's called inertia. It's called yeah, inertia. Yeah, That'll yeah. kill your ass. The, the G-forces alone, would you would turn into a splat. So Have you ever seen Vladimir Putin? Man. You tell me no, Mach 7 is going to kill that man? Have you I, seen I not Rocky it. 4? <laughs> right, I state you the documentary Rocky 4. Ivan Drago could have survived that. Dude, right. okay. Look, I agree right. with both of you. Real quick, real quick, real <laughs> quick. We live in a phone where every there's there's like seven billion. No, I think actually the count is like thirty five billion. Like, you know, smartphones are out there at this point, right? I, I don't remember the actual number, but you literally have billions of people walking around with video cameras in their pocket, mm -hmm. and there's not one piece of convincing fucking footage of any oh. of this shit. There's really? not a single piece alien. out there. 
every time I, I, I hear, hold on. every time I, hold on, you guys, just let me finish my sentence. Every time I see footage that is supposed to prove, like I'm looking at this giant alien castle right now. Every time I see a video, here's an alien, here's, a, here's you know, here's something flying through the air. It's always so fucking potato. It looks like it was taken on a fucking flip phone that fucking, you know, Gordon Gecko had in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, hold on. Hear me out. First of all, that's cool. I understand that there is a lot out there. Second of all, that is false because there is a lot. And I will, after the show, I will gladly link you to some 1080p direct from fucking NASA footage, not some fucking hillbilly with his telescope and a fucking but Nokia phone. But people capture footage, footage all the time. But hold so up. Far. Also, you could go take your iPhone out there and try to focus on something with the sky with it, man. Like, yeah, yeah we have go. iPhones and stuff that can record stuff. I can't even record something in high definition at the end of my fucking yard with my phone. You know what I mean? Like, you can't blame it on the technology that we have that disproves. We have, let's, we have let's amateur 90, people with telescopes. See. And, I mean, there's just so much shit pointed there, at the sky all the time. There is. How do I not have, stuff. like, if if there's literally fucking aliens buzzing around all the time, picking people up and fucking sticking them with anal probes and, you know, asking them questions and doing whatever they're doing, right? Like, I mean, the reports it are that they're here the all ass, the time. Brother. Well, that's, I mean, what is it? Fire in the sky. That's... Uh, the most famous one, right? Travis and Walton, he didn't get trolled in the ass. ass man. Hear me out. Hear, hear me out. When we dissect a frog, <laughs> do you really think we give a fuck about what we put it through? We stick stuff up animals' asses That's all the time God. in the name of science. That's not true enough. You don't think, but I can find footage of a frog being dissected you don't in high think, definition. I'm not, <laughs> how about this then? Let's say 99% of all claims are absolute bullshit and can yeah. be explained. And let's say that most of them. I firmly believe that 99% of them Agreed. can be explained. Agreed. But then why should I believe that? It's one percent. It's why, that why 1%. Why should I believe them? Why should I believe them? Well, look, like what, right. what well, evidence me, out there? Like, that's my, always my problem. I want to believe, right? I really do. And when I was a kid, I did believe. But there is, I have never seen any compelling evidence. And I've looked. I've looked. Absence never of evidence it. is not evidence, Brian. But it's also not, it's not it's no, it's not anything. Absence. No, it's not. But that's it. It fuels. It furthers the investigation. That's what I'm saying. Absence of evidence is not evidence, and it works it's both not ways. Evidence You're of right. absence. But this is what it I'm works saying. both okay. ways. It works both ways, <laughs> except like it. It doesn't prove like absence of evidence let, also let, doesn't let prove just, that it's not there or that it is true, there. Like, true. But let, let me just using say one it as thing. a a crutch. Let me just say one thing. Just one thing, and, and I think that this should be a creed that we all live by. We can't say that anything doesn't isn't real. We can't say that anything doesn't exist. We can't say de definitively that these things are not true, unless you do extensive true research. Unless you quit your job and you go and actually find out about this and read tons of literature and actually become a, a, a you know an expert in a particular in a particular field. To say you know with very limited life, first of all, we're all pretty young life experience. And on top of that, how much of that life we've actually looked into a particular subject and say no, it's not true. That's just too arrogant. I think the best way to to live your life is to say it could be. I just don't know because there are people. I'm sorry, I don't care what anyone says. Something came to, into my room as a child. You guys know this. I've talked to you about it. Something came out, out of my closet as a child. My brother saw it. Our door closed by itself. My mom was beating on the door. The door locked. A whole bunch of creepy shit happened with this thing in our room. And it, I call it the fruit head man. You guys have known me for years. I told you the truth. I have no reason to lie. And I swear to God, I don't care what anybody's saying in, in the comments. It's totally true. I grew up uh, looking into ufology because this thing looked like a fruit. Its head was a perfect like oval. Its body was very skinny. And as a child of three or four years old, I'm thinking that this thing is like made of fruit coming out of my closet. And so I started looking into it and I realized this is what most people would consider a great extraterrestrial. These things are real. Just because you, just because it didn't happen to you doesn't mean it didn't happen to somebody else. You know, I know that these kind of things really exist. And it's like, I'm not a fucking crazy person. But the thing is, if, if I didn't go through what I went through and I heard somebody say that, I might be like you guys and say, man, that's, that's straight bullshit. But I, I'm not fucking crazy. That's, and this I, really I don't happened. Think you are, I don't think you are. And I'll say this, that like, regardless of what people want to think about that or not, like to even share that, first of all, care. is no, to, to share that takes balls. I've had experiences, not quite that crazy, with friends that were sober 
who could back my story up, but I just don't feel comfortable telling them, man, because that's the problem. Like that's the stigma. I don't around care it. Like that's. Think, like, I mean, people are going to look. Look, people, some people, no matter what. No, I'm not saying that you shouldn't talk about it. I, I'm just saying, like me personally, like I've I've had. An experience. <laughs> I've had some experiences that where I was dead sober that I just don't really feel like, you know, sharing with people, you know, like, and there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of really credible people out there who have had some experiences, which, like I said, it begs one of two questions. Is it aliens or is it us? Either way, it's not cool because it if those cool, things, man. if those things flying around the sky are us or some sort of technology that we have, we should not still be on fossil fuels. Wilson. We should not still be milking every dollar that we can from people. I until thought you were about to say cows. <laughs> then, Wilson, uh, like I mentioned earlier, J. Allen Hynek and Jacques Vallée, you guys look these guys up. Uh, they, they theorize after years of research going around the world and investigating that these things are always here. They say sure. that the, the scary thing is, where are they when we don't see them? For sure, uh, you, for you've sure. Seen, you've seen videos of these things just appearing. They're inside turning, the moon. Turn, turning into two or turning <laughs> into three. And then turning in the into hollow into one solid. The uh, and, and so these these guys were serious <laughs> ufologists. They actually wrote these documents for the government, you know, years ago. I think it was in the, the late 70s or, or early 70s when they actually came up with all this information after these year-long researches that they'd done that these things are always here. And, and they... They kind of theorize that they're demonic and they're able to move through like dimensions slightly, and it, it all makes sense, you know. I'm you not laughing of, at you, B. I'm, I'm laughing just, at I'm, I'm, I'm laughing I, at science in chat that says uh, they'll be milking Briar tonight after <laughs> his comments. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> I, listen, listen. I, for one, welcome our new alien overlord. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look, I, I can solve this for you, Briar. I think you said uh -huh. that you wanted some clear HD 1080p footage. I can send you someone getting probed in 1080p <laughs> if you want to see it. Oh, he's I on Pornhub, bro. It costs him 9.99 a month. <laughs> 1080p. I'll we'll skip out on the hente. Thank you. I think we have a little bit of time. 720p for free. We have a little bit of time left. I think it's time for our palate cleanser. You okay. guys agree? Yes, I, yes. Do. I think it's time for the palate cleanser. Gary, why don't you roll this one out? All right. Well, we are. <laughs> pretty much balls deep in crazy so let's continue that <laughs> journey uh into crazy town we're gonna play the revolver staple um in a quick fire format we got 10 minutes to get this solved all right fuck marry kill and this, this is revolver decides like we have to agree this this, this is revolver decides we're okay. going fuck marry kill uh, unless you run out of time, in which case it's revolver just agrees to disagree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the three crazy bastards this week in our lineup first is Alex Jones, um, oh. who what who once claimed that the government were turning the frogs gay. Mm -hmm. G Gary Boosie, who is just an interesting character, um, one of America's just, finest crazy. actors and a, a treasure of the United States. Uh, and lastly, Billy Mitchell, who has recently had his records <laughs> stripped from him. He was once referred to as the King of Kong. He held over a million points on Donkey Kong Arcade. But it is a, it's just found out he's been cheating at the game, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's quite a uh, an interesting character if you've ever watched the documentary. So our merry band here are going to decide who we want to fuck. Who we want to marry and who we want to kill. So who wants to open the gambit? What are you going to do to the right honourable Alex Jones? We haven't heard your voice much, Gary. I want to hear yeah. you go first. Me? I, I was just yeah. absorbing the crazy. Um, <laughs> I guess we know you're going to fuck. Go ahead. I love you guys. <laughs> so if I had to pick this one, I'm going to start off with um, my, my fuck, which is Gary Boosie. Uh, and the reason I'd fuck him is he's Hollywood royalty. You know, he's, he's A-list celebs. Imagine the parties I could go to when I'm fucking Gary Boosie. You just imagine what I get into. I reckon it's not going to be the, the A-list of Hollywood, actually. He's probably going to be more C-list. So I'm going to be attending parties with, like, Paulie Shaw and, and people like that. You know, the real... Isn't that really yeah. the party you want to go to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Corey okay, Feldman and stuff, you know, that, and them sorts of guys. Oh, and, and I think that's where the real action is happening. So Gary Boosie is going to be my man. Um, Billy Mitchell... I think no one really likes Billy Mitchell here. I mean, we may have disagreed, but... Well, that's a cheater, always a cheater, Gary. 
I'm going to kill that motherfucker. He was never a nice guy when he was the King of Kong. Uh, he's point, definitely Beastly. not a nice guy now. You know, if you're a hot sauce fan, though, he'll get, get you the hookup. Probably I'm black so. and I'm still saying no. <laughs> <laughs> and then that leaves me with Alex Jones. And the reason I want to marry Alex Jones is that he's frequently telling you on his uh, his documentary, Infowars, well, 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 that... Um, <laughs> That he is what is it, a super alpha male? Is that where he refers himself to? I think something along those lines. He's always got his shirt <laughs> off. He does seem to be, you know, like he could handle himself in a fight. Um, he also seems like he's very passionate as a man, you know, very passionate man, passionate about what he believes in. I think he'd be passionate with me. Um, so I want that sort of passion in my life. You know, you never know what each day is going to bring. What's Alex going to be ranting about? You know, you come home. That slips the amphetamine into all of his. Onto all of his well, lunches, just imagine you're, is, is you're driving energetic. down, you're <laughs> driving down your little ranch that you've got with him past the white picket fences, and Alex is on the roof again with his shirt off, screaming at the top of his voice around how there's, you know, what's it called, chemical trails in the corn. Just you know, just, you never know what's going to happen with him, and I think that makes for an interesting marriage. So, <laughs> I'm putting a ring on Alex. Uh, well, I- I'll go second because Gary pretty much nailed it for me for slightly different reasons. Uh, I'm going to kill Billy. I, I don't, like I said, I don't believe that uh, cheaters deserve a second chance. You know, he, he cheated at Kong, and uh, he'd probably end up cheating on me. And um, ask my, my son's mother. They'd know what I, what I do if I find out you're cheating. You're gone. Anyway, so he'd be dead. I would have to fuck. Wait, wait, wait. Can we clarify here? You didn't kill her. Jesus. <laughs> 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 no, it didn't do nothing. That, really, that, that segment there sounded like you just murdered her. <laughs> spiritually, Jesus spiritually. <laughs> All right, so yeah, <laughs> that did sound like I killed her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I killed the relationship. Uh, and conspiracy theories. Gary Busey, uh, you know, even though I had to get over the eye. He'd be an interesting fuck, I think, because, you know, who doesn't want to sleep at least one time with a, a clinically crazy person? You know, just to see how close you can come to death, you got to wear a bulletproof vest. I think Gary Busey would be interesting for one night. And, of course, Alex Jones would have to be marriage material. I'd have to throw the ring on Alex for a few reasons, because Alex Jones has become, you know, this huge conspiracy theorist over the years due to the information that's been coming his way and his connections. As... My wife, because he'd have to assume that role, I would I would take the internet away from him, and I'd have to you know I'd only pay for the necessities. Uh, I would get him a regular job, I, and to me the the probably the funnest thing that uh, the most fun that I can have out <laughs> is taking that dude is going to be the most annoying cashier at Walmart man. <laughs> Every time you go through that line, he's like, "Did I tell you about the fucking frogs?" <laughs> Fuck, <man. laughs> I just want to check out did and you, leave with my yodels, man. You can't <laughs> even time. buy Jiffy peanut butter without him being like, did you know that's, it was called Jiff? That's, that's what I'm saying. Look, I have to take Alex grocery shopping just to see what's going on. And, and I would let Alex work in my t-shirt business to see what kind of ideas he comes up with. You know, I think the guy has a wealth of information. I just got to stop it from coming. Oh, because the memes are going to be great. <laughs> yeah, of course. Remember when he turned into Dragon Ball Z and went Super Saiyan and screamed as hair flew? Yeah, Alex Jones is a very excited. I've player. now just got a, a vision of Alex Jones working a series of menial <laughs> jobs and what that would look like. That's like a sketch show in itself. Could you imagine right, me yes. a used car salesman yes. working the forecourt? That'd just be fantastic. I, I mean, I would try to get him to be like the, the, the greeter at Walmart. I wouldn't even want him at a, you know, a register. No, you got to put w- him at the register so he can look at people's products and be like, the global elitists because that's his favorite thing to say or he'll he would, be like he'll look at something he, and be like have you heard of the mandela effect and like, <laughs> put, him, put him in the health food section and he would sell everything over there because he's constantly selling water he's constantly selling you know supplements i think water it's, sells itself pretty well I mean, yeah that's i don't another, really need a sales that's team another conspiracy <laughs> who remembers back in the day right when uh, you know my dad i used to go to the grocery store with my dad go to kroger and he said look at these idiots buying water I'll never buy water. And, 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 you know, as a kid, I thought it was smart. I was like, yeah, I'll never buy it either. We got it for free at home. Don't yeah, we did. didn't know at the time that our ancient infrastructure was leaching lead into all our water. <laughs> our <ancient infrastructure. laughs> that you were paying for because it ain't free. So you're yeah, still paying for point, water. Right? So there might have been some, some bullshit there. 
<laughs> All right, so that's that's my order. Kill Billy Mitchell. Mm. Fuck, fuck the crazy and, and marry Alex Jones. I'm sorry, Kate. Wilson? <sighs> okay, uh, Billy Mitchell's the only one I've seen in the pip, pin up, so um, I'm huh? definitely fu- definitely fucking Billy Mitchell. 100%. You never seen the King Kong? He's got no. pinups. He's got pinups of himself in his own house, as one does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Beasley, you have a portrait of yourself. I mean, next step is naked. I'm just saying, like you know, you could. That is, it's, that is a small step too. That is not a giant leap. <laughs> <one. laughs> it's, it's in the bed. It's in the bedroom on the ceiling. Yeah. Um. This may come as a surprise to you, but Alex Jones has got to go, man. Um, I'm not. He'll a, never get any information ever again. I'm and not a big not conspiracy theorist. Why would you kill the conspiracy theorist? Because I'm all for a good conspiracy theory, man. But a fear mongrel, I I can't do the fear mongering, dude. And Gary Busey, I'm marrying him because his son was in Starship Troopers, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like he and I <laughs> want to meet his son and say thank you you look like guile from street fighter <laughs> right how did they miss that, that casting opportunity yeah. that's my that's my uh, you can my do that during a one-night stand you're not going to have a 30-year conversation want, with gary Beasley's i want son. the rest of my life to tell him that he looks like guile and every time he comes into the room i want the dun 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 gary Busey is the obvious fuck Right, he's yes. obviously the fuck because he's yeah. gonna be the most fun on that date night. Right, you're gonna go out, <laughs> you're gonna have a blast that night, hanging out with Gary Busey. You don't want to marry that motherfucker though. I mean, he is gonna Got talk the- through every fucking movie, every movie. You're never gonna get to watch a movie again in peace. No, definitely fucking <laughs> don't marry him. <laughs> but that leaves you with a hard decision because now you've got to either marry uh, uh, the King Billy of Kong, Mitchell. yeah, Billy Mitchell, or uh, Alex Jones, and that's a tough decision because I kind of hate <coughs> both of them. <laughs> but I'm going to take one for the team here, and I'm going to marry Billy Mitchell because I do think that having the King of Kong around could kind of be fun. <laughs> and he does have that hot sauce business, so he's going to be a provider. <laughs> he's so, going to provide it, not hide it. Right. He's he's going <laughs> to contribute. He's going to he's going to he's going to be part of the family, and we'll get over this whole cheating thing. We can work through it with therapy, couples therapy. We'll get over this cheating thing. We'll restrict his access to Mame, and we'll, we'll get over it. We'll build up the reputation. We'll get that mullet in fine flare order. We'll get it all tightened up again, and we'll get we'll get Billy Mitchell back on track, back to king status. That he Matching deserves. mullets, bro. You but, plus. And I agree with Wilson on the uh, on the. Uh, go ahead. Wilson. We'll, would you say plus? I, I was just gonna say plus. You would develop trust in a relationship over time, and he'll tell you. After a couple of years, if he cheated, being the king of Kong, he'll let you know the true scoop right? of what happened. All right, you're never going to really yeah. know. Gonna, you're going to never really oh. know unless you marry him. Mm. And then Alex Jones, man, I kind of agree with Wilson. I don't really like the guy. I think he's kind of funny, like in clips, but he's definitely a fear, fear monger. I don't, I really don't he's like that people actually like believe him. And yeah. like, he's <laughs> like, toxic. That scares the shit you out of me. World, yeah. I just, I, I can't let you kill him. I can't let you do it. I don't believe him, <laughs> but he's adorable. He's 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 like he's like an angry. You know um that movie Ted, right? That that, yeah. that came out recently yeah. with the, the little teddy bear that's cute and pudgy, but like says really offensive things. Yeah. He's like he's that character in a human form. He's just like a little round guy that is just adorable he's got the he's got like little chubby cheeks i just i just want to take him home yeah, like, i can't let you do it to his, him. his head reminds me of mr potato head you know how mr potato head you put the little hat on him or stick the ears on his hair always looks artificially placed it's like someone was sitting across the room and had some hair and just threw it like a frisbee and it just boop. Said, fuck I've, it leave I've, it where I've, it lands <laughs> like look, all i know is at night when you maybe had a couple too many drinks and you're feeling a little bit vulnerable who you want trying to take advantage of you? Billy fucking skinny ass Mitchell or Alex Jones, who looks like a fucking bear. <laughs> I'm gonna, to me. I, yeah, I, I like my chances against Gary. the King of Kong than like King this. fucking Kong. He gets, he gets really sweaty and red in the face when he gets I, into something. That's too. just natural <laughs> lube. <laughs> he's adorable. I've got a four-year-old, well, approaching four at home. And 
watching the way he gets angry and watching the way Alex Jones get angry, there's so much similarity. And I just can't help but like smile lovingly at them both. You know, to me, it's the same, the same sort of uh, affection that I feel. But no, no one's looking at him and going, this guy speaks truth. People are looking at him and going, you're adorable. Keep no, going. that's like, not true. That's not true. People? Seriously? People I'm really do believe him. I, I subscribe to him, not for that. I just think he's, he's entertainment. There's man. one person sure. I have not, that I have, there's one guy who rarely has to check the guests on his podcast, and that's Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. And there's one guest that he's had that Joe had to check about every 10 minutes, and that was Alex Jones. And in second place, Tom DeLong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like He'll look at him and be like, come on, man, you can't can't just say that dude like i fucking love joe rogan dude i I feel like that would be my role as the 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 partner there as the as the spouse would just be to say come on come on just give him a little cuddle bring him in and you know i don't want to see you in any relationship where you're the sane one (laughs) (laughs) i feel like none none of the other options there could bring me the pleasure that alex would on a daily basis Fantastic voice. It, 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 yeah, I, I can't. I can't let you do it. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta look at the comments. Whatever you want to do to the other guys, fine. But I've got. I've got to marry Alex. It has mm. to happen. I feel like Billy needs another chance, man. He can. He can get through this. Cheaters <laughs> never prosper, Briar. Mm. I'm mm. telling you now. They never. They, they'll come to you and say, "Listen, baby, I'll never do it again. I promise." And you, you say, look at that mullet. Beast. Tell the truth, bitch. How do you say no to that mullet? It. How do you say no to that mullet? You can't stay mad at that mullet. Who was the dude? Happy fucking like, Gilmore. <laughs> absolutely fucked over. Billy Mitchell, when he set the record, there was a, a dude beforehand um, on Kong that was going for the high score record. Paul that, you might remember this. Might be Paul, Paul Weeby. He trained for like a year to to get this Kong record, and then they asked him to to do it live. And he travelled like half the country to do it in front of a crowd at an arcade, and he got like yeah. near the score. And then like a week later, Billy Mitchell sent that tape of him getting over the million and shit all over that guy's achievements. And that tape was fake all along. Yeah, I just, I think that that's a dick move. You can't yeah. you can't marry that man. You can't marry him. I'm not he's, letting he's... Alex Jones in my bed, man. <laughs> <laughs> happening <laughs> maybe i'll I just be an abusive husband <laughs> we'll just verbally gonna... abuse billy mitchell for the rest of his days <laughs> i don't think you've got to fuck alex jones i feel like what do you want for dinner out. tonight cheater <laughs> <laughs> i feel like alex jones is never making it up to the bedroom i feel like he is gonna pass out in a whiskey fueled st- like slump on the on the couch every night and you could just tuck him in down there and leave him to it you don't need to bring him into bed. Just enjoy the spectacle. It's like watching the last days of decadence, like the fall of Rome. But he's your husband. <laughs> <laughs> There's something to be said about watching that level of dysfunction. But that would be uh, <laughs> be my man. Sorry, I'm reading the comments. They're hilarious tonight. All night they've been <laughs> funny as hell. All right. We need to, we Do we have there. to desi- decide here? I don't know. We haven't we haven't quite decided. Oh man, this is really fucked because two against two, and well, I got I'm the biggest guy, so I'm gonna have to bear. I'm gonna have to force this one, guys. I Alex, can't. Alex Lynch. Done. I don't remember what your answer was, but what is it? <laughs> <laughs> you talking about the revolver decides? Yeah. Alex lives. Billy's dead, and Gary gets fucked. Enjoy your night. Both Garys. As long as Gary gets fucked, I'm happy in the end. (laughs) Boom. And that has been the Revolver Live Conspiracy Edition. We dabbled into World of Warcraft. We dabbled into Gary Busey, Hollow Moon, Mandela Effect. You guys, give us some ideas in the comments. Follow us on Twitter. Let us know what kind of shows you'd like to see in the future. Uh, You know, we can center shows around your ideas or your topics. So be sure to send your topics if you have some for us in the future at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We love to read them. And, of course, send your reviews in to iTunes, Podbean, or wherever you do your podcasting so that, it you know, it really does help our podcast. And we're very grateful. Do you know what? They've been knocking it out of the park. We have been 
getting views and followers out of nowhere. I mean, I, I didn't even know that many people knew that we existed, let alone listen to us on a weekly basis. But uh, yeah, the iTunes podcast, Podbean podcast, whatever else you, you get us on. Uh, SoundCloud, I think it, it picks up on the feed too. It, it really helps out. And if you want to follow us, um, you know, that that's growing as well at record rate. And that helps us get noticed, helps more people find it and waste two hours every week listening to frankly m- misinformation of the highest caliber <laughs> i mean and, and you guys let me know what you think before the show i was to- talking to the guys i love the idea and the title of our podcast revolver live but i'm thinking three beards one beauty you guys let us know what you think in the future you know something else that we've probably should be getting on is maybe once a month putting out some sort of a form of Q and a for Twitter and chat and doing one topic a month where it's Q and a from chat. Yeah. That'd be Pretty awesome. sure they'd be down with that. That would be fun. Yeah. Let us know chat. If you'd like to get involved more. So we'd love you guys want to know what happened in that bedroom. When that fucking thing came out of my closet, I swear to God, hit me on Twitter. I'll tell you the whole damn story. I think you, <laughs> didn't you tell a story on, on the show? It wasn't, it wasn't on air. No. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't like ridicule. I feel like I've heard it at least twice. At least twice. And maybe you told it on Beastly Thoughts. I, th- I think yeah. you did yeah, tell I it definitely on. did. I think it was on the Beastly yeah. Thoughts. I've heard it. Yeah. I've heard it at least twice. It, it, it's, it's a, it really happened. It's a real deal. And if people want to know, I'll definitely share it with them. So where can, we haven't signed off in a while, where uh-huh. the hell can all these new beautiful listeners find us and fuck with us on Twitter? YouTube, Beastly Gamer, Twitter, Beastly Gamer Max, M-A-X. Uh, youporn.com slash Briar Rabbit. Uh, ChristianMingles.com slash Briar Rabbit. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> RedTube.com slash Briar Rabbit. <laughs> I like to keep my options open, Beastly. I just don't want to be locked Mingle? down by your I just don't want to be locked down by, you know, your beliefs, and... man. Don't why do you have to ridicule my beliefs, Beastly? I'm not. I'm just saying it's an oxymoron. <laughs> and uh YouTube. Christian Mingle slash well. He's and, naked uh, holding the cross. You can also find him on YouTube.com slash Big Sugar. <laughs> Big Sugar. Coming soon. Coming soon. It's the only place you can find him on YouTube. The Briar Rabbit channel is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Big Sugar. You can find <laughs> me. We should, we should do an episode where we're all our alter egos. We got English Muffin. Uh-huh. We got Sweet Dick Willie. Big Sugar. And you guys said Brown Sugar? No, Atlanta Anaconda. Atlanta Anaconda. <laughs> Put a little bit of brown sugar on the tip. You're only brown sugar and when you're specifically matched up with Briar. Then it's, you know, okay. white, sugar, uh, it's white sugar and brown sugar. Gotcha. You know what I mean? That way there's no confusion. We got, we've got commands in chat now for our alter egos. That's amazing. <laughs> if you guys want to find me, emotes. you can Why find me. Why have tefty emotes? You guys can find me raiding my local 7-Eleven for Lunchables. When I'm not at 7-Eleven getting Lunchables, you can find me on Twitter at Ryu Wilson, R-Y-U Wilson. There are still 7-Elevens? Sure. I, I got what? two of them within walking distance of my house. It's fucking weird. So really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. Thank you for hanging out today. We will see you next week. Actually, we should raid. Shouldn't we? We should start raiding after this show, right? Yeah. Let's do that. I'm not logging off. Let's raid. (laughs) (laughs) We're doing a raid. We're raiding. Nobody's in the Warren. God, every time I try and raid the Warren, nobody's in there. Can we stop at local recordings? When all the people who are in your stream, you send them to another? Yeah. Oh, Grace is live. We're going to raid Grace. Grace is streaming. Excellent. Also, can we we stop our local recordings before we raid someone? We could do that, I guess, if if we must. (laughs) We could, but I didn't. (laughs) <laughs> I'm kidding. I did. All right, let's go raid Grays slash raid Grays, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Did that not go? That didn't go, did it? It did. It did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, All yeah. Right. It says uh, forty-one raiders, forty-five. It's climbing. All right. <laughs> He's gonna be stoked. <laughs> 10 out of 10 ending. <laughs> Great, Grateful Head in chat swears up and down that he was an extra in Starship Troopers. Did you see that in chat? No. Yeah, he said 25 bucks he got in. Yeah. $25? Was he one of the aliens that came running over the hill? I think he was probably one of the just like bullshit soldiers. Ah, uh, he's offline. Oh. <gasps> Fuck. 
Did he just log off? He might have. 